I do yeah. the heavy lifting. And both mics are working. All right. All right. It is now. Yes, it is. It is now six o'clock. I know this is kind of an earlier session for doing our live streams, but I did indicate that uh, I've got a special guest. Uh, you probably know her by her screen name of No No, <laughs> uh, who's going to join us uh, for this particular session. Um, uh, format is going to be pretty much the way it normally goes. Uh, we're going to have the uh, uh, housekeeping tasks that I have to uh, to attend to. Uh, then we'll open it up to uh, to your questions. Uh, Brad Farmer, I'd like to say thank you for joining us. Uh, we've got a very small, very small group uh, so far this morning, uh, this, afternoon, this evening, uh, probably because of the earlier hour that we're doing the live stream. But uh, again, uh, those of you who are going to catch up later, uh, DIY Fermentation is a website that is designed to help uh, novice home winemakers make wine at home. Uh, this channel doesn't use uh, a lot of additives like sulfites or we don't use uh, bentonite or, or, or sparkaloid or the whole laundry list of, uh, of, of additives that you can use to improve your wine making abilities. Uh, we try and keep things as simple as possible. Uh, so if you're just starting out, uh, this is the channel for you. Uh, we probably will not be advancing uh, the discussions beyond uh, into uh, higher or more advanced techniques because we want to keep things simple for the first time novice to be able to follow along. Uh, now then, some of the housekeeping tasks. Uh, new members. Uh, we have, let's see if I can do this real quick. We have three new members who have joined us this, this month. Uh, those members are uh, Happy Homestead, which has a, which has a very respectable channel on, on its own. Uh, Happy Homestead is pretty much a, a sister channel to mine. We pretty much do the same the same types of wine makings uh, without using a lot of additives. Uh, he has a very good uh, uh, a following. Uh, later on, uh, when YouTube has uh, finally processed this video, I'm going to have a link to his channel so you can check him out. I know that uh, before I started my channel, when I was just learning how to make wine, uh, I pretty much kept an eye on, on, on his techniques and how he was doing his, along with a few other channels. Uh, and he's, uh, he's put in his dues. And quite honestly, uh, if you're looking for an additional source, if you would like to just visit some of the other channels <laughs> before coming back home to, to mine. Don't stay, <laughs> just visit. Then, um, um, I, again, I'll have a link to the Happy Homestead uh, 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 site as well, our channel as well. Also, Gary Grummel uh, joined us uh, earlier this month, as did Sue Walhart. Uh, if I didn't give you a shout out in one of the earlier videos, I'm just making sure that uh, you are recognized for this particular video as well. Uh, additionally, we have, ah, uh, yes, I was going to get back to the main screen here. I was going to uh, wait until a few more people have joined in. However, uh, some of you uh, who have watched uh, some of my videos, at least the last three or four, have uh, uh, made, uh, noticed the fact that I was tr uh, trying to make uh, a plea for donations for new camera equipment. Well, I can honestly say that, uh, uh, switching screens here, uh, that particular camera fund, uh, we had a number of donations, uh, uh, Super Chats as well, uh, new memberships as well, also helped, uh, helped to uh, defray some of the costs. But again, uh, everyone who uh, uh, contributed a donation to the uh, PayPal account or is going to uh, uh, add to the uh, Super Chat uh, uh, festivities as well, and again, new members, I just want to say thank you very much because, whereas before I was using the uh, cell phone as my uh, primary means of recording my videos and doing my live streams, uh, we now have a, a new camera. Quite frankly, uh, basically, it's uh, get back to the main screen here because I want to do it this way and I want to do this one. Yes, here we go. Probably won't be able to see it, and I've got a, I've got a, an increased delay. This is the new camera. <laughs> uh, so it, it came in. Uh, Day before yesterday, uh, I did an unboxing video on my unboxing channel, 
But in case you're wondering where your money went, <laughs> it went here. <laughs> uh, I still, it's the camera is paid for insofar as Canon is concerned because I went to the Canon website to purchase it. However, the the can uh, the camera is not yet fully purchased uh, in the eyes of a firm <laughs> who who is wondering uh, when they're going to get the rest of their money basically for me purchasing this camera. Uh, I made a big chunk of that uh, purchase price today, as a matter of fact. Uh, I got $200 went towards their direction, and I'm going to try and get this camera paid off in the next uh, two or three months. Uh, but again, uh, I still need more equipment. I still need your donations. I still need your, your super chats. I still I still need you to help make this channel a, a bit more than, than what it currently is. Uh, let's see. If you are joining us, looks like we have a very light crowd this uh, this evening. Uh, do give me a quick uh, hello. Let me know that you're there. And let's see if this is working today. It never does. It's supposed to let me know who all is currently on the live stream, but it never, ever does. So that being aside, we get back to ah, Adam Keeney. Thank you very much from California. Kind of early for you, about three o'clock in the afternoon, I believe. Thank you for joining. Um, okay, I'm gonna let uh, I'm gonna let uh, No No uh, read off some of the questions because again, uh, this is entirely for you. And I've got one last item that I want to cover before opening up uh, opening up the floor, and that's uh, the question of expertise. Uh, some of the comments that I've been getting well since the very beginning of this channel. Uh, they presume that I have a lot more expertise in winemaking than I currently do. Okay, I've been making wine for just about a year, uh, from, from from my very first batch to <laughs> my last batch, which was this coffee wine uh, uh, that uh, you saw me making in my last video. Uh, if you're going to ask me uh, questions in the comments uh, that you send, uh, keep them very very basic. Uh, uh, more advanced techniques or, or techniques that uh, I'm generally not really going to spend a great deal of time answering. Uh, you can throw your questions out there and any of the other members uh, or, or, or uh, uh, those of you who wants to uh, join in can answer uh, those particular questions. But no, uh, I'm not going to try and help you make a batch of wine that you have not seen me make before. OK, uh, I'm just not going to have the experience to be able to do that for you. Uh, again, let's just keep it simple, and uh, I'll try and do my best to answer your questions. I do answer all co uh, comments uh, myself personally. Uh, if it's uh, just a simple thank you for watching <laughs> response, or if I uh, give you a full paragraph in terms of trying to help you with your your, your uh, uh, whatever question you may have, I'll at least give it a shot. But if you're asking me for more advanced techniques, or again uh, for suggestions on how you make a given wine that I've not made before. I'm really not going to be to help. Okay, that having been said, I have now cleared my to-do list, and the floor is now yours. Don't be bashful. I know how it, how hard it is from the early onset for you guys to ask questions. Uh, no, no. Yes. By the way, has been. Uh, was my very first subscriber. Oh, by the way, subscribers. I currently have over 4,400 subscribers. Thank you very much. Uh, slowly getting up there. Uh, my goal is initially 10,000 by hopefully February of, of next year. Uh, uh, averaging roughly around 600 new subscribers a month. Uh, subscribers a month, yep. Uh, it would be real nice if I had 600 members. <laughs> that would really, really help out quite a bit. But uh, again, uh, the channel continues to grow. Uh, it's, it's growing as a result of uh, your participation, your viewing, uh, your comments, your likes, the occasional dislikes. Uh, all of those uh, are letting me know that uh, at least you're you're involved in uh, what it is that I'm doing. Um, okay. That being said, uh, Adam, Brad. Questions? I have a question. Okay. Are we tasting anything tonight? I thought about uh, cracking open a bottle of wine uh, for you t to do a tasting. This was not supposed to be a tasting video. I've got... But it can be. <laughs> it could be. 
I'll have to see what it is that I want to open because I had a bottle of that pineapple wine last night. Cracked that open and pretty much finished that off. But um, I'll he does have, these without me. I'll, I'll have to check and see what I've got uh, that's ready to go. That's already been back sweetened. That uh, it's probably something that uh, she'll like. <laughs> and, uh, um, I'll have to see what I've got because each batch, I only make one gallon batches. And as a result of that, out of each one gallon batch, there's only five bottles of wine that are produced. And out of that, one bottle is used for the uh, six month, what used to be the six month tastings. Uh, those dates are now getting pushed back because I'm now letting them, uh, I'm now letting them sit in the carboy is much, much longer. So they're getting a lot clearer before I actually do the, uh, actually do the uh, uh, the bottling um, but uh, we'll have to see any thoughts on well I do step feeding uh, no not step feeding um, the only reason why I don't step feed uh, the wine is because I don't because of, uh, again because I don't use sulfites I don't use yeast energizers I don't use yeast nutrients uh, since I'm not using any of that, step feeding really isn't going to, um, doesn't really work uh, for this particular channel. Uh, again, it's one of those more advanced techniques that um, uh, most home winemakers will employ, but it's just not something that's done here because we're trying to keep things on a very, very, very simple level. Adam Keeney has a question. Your banana wine question, did the banana flavor become more or less pronounced over time? Uh, mine tend to start tasting like pineapple. Not bad. <laughs> <laughs> I wish they would taste more like bananas. Um, they, I, I can't really answer that because the only time I tasted the banana wine was when I did the, uh, the six month tasting. And uh, it clearly, and I, and I made it quite clear during in that particular video that the wine <laughs> was nowhere near ready. Uh, banana wine is a, is a 12 to 16 month effort at least. Uh, so before it begins to fully develop its flavor uh, to the point where it's enjoyable, you got to wait at least 12 months uh, before you crack it open and, and give it a try. Uh, this is not just my opinion. Uh, when I did some of the research on, on doing the banana wine and especially after I did the six month tasting, uh, uh, the comments that I was reading or some of the other uh, uh, websites, and chat boards and whatever, uh, they all pretty much agree that banana wine is not one of those early wines that you can just crack open it <laughs> before that 12 month period. You're gonna have to wait that one out. The Candy Floss is saying hello from the UK. Okay, Candy Floss. Candy Floss King. Oh, my correction. <laughs> um, what are we saying here? Uh, hello from the UK. Recently found your videos and love them. Well, thank you very much. Uh, currently, I got to, uh, uh, currently got your banana wine recipe on the go. Looking forward to it. <laughs> Apart from your uh, occasional rackings, just put it out of your mind and just wait for it. Uh, same thing for, uh, I'll say the same thing that I said for Adam. Next. Lujitsu, I love that name. Sorry, you're, sorry that you're late, but here from Quebec, good to have you here. You know, both of us, we're fellow, we, <laughs> I won't. I was about to say we're fellow Detroiters. I guess we. I never really gave up on Detroit. Well, I should to you. I'm still a Lions fan. Okay, <laughs> but uh, we're both native Detroiters for the most part. Uh, yes, and Canada is right across the, the street from us. So, love Canada. Uh, those not in the know, Canada uh, is actually south of Detroit. I think is one of the few if not the only uh, place in, in, in the United States where uh, uh, a foreign country, well, let me rephrase that. <laughs> That's going to come out all wrong. I'll just simply say that Canada, at least Windsor, is, is, is south of Detroit. But uh, I digress. Next. <laughs> um, so play old words. Yes, for, for jujitsu. Hmm. Okay. Oh, I got it. Yep. Yeah. 
fighting technique. <laughs> what does Sue say? Uh, Sue Walhart. Hello. She says, do you put a date on your labels when you bottle your wine? I most certainly do. Uh, I knew I was going to grab a... I do. Uh, uh, I do. Go and grab a bottle. I'm, I was resisting getting up and, <laughs> and, and, and grabbing anything. Uh, but because I now have someone here who can uh, entertain whilst I grab a few things. Entertain. I'll do a soft shoe. <laughs> You plan, Lujitsu plans to move to the U.S. after COVID. Welcome. Okay, this is going to, had I known I would have uh, actually done a photograph of this so that we can have it on display. So this might be kind of awkward. In fact, let me try and do it this way. Um, this was the, I bottled my very first mead, and uh, generally with my labels I'll have, and this will probably be hard to say because it's not going to focus in on it properly, in fact it's not. Uh, generally I'll have a little little picture of what it is that's in the bottle, uh, my name, uh, followed by what it is, and then I'll have in smaller letters the actual date. It'll basically say nothing more than born uh, 9-2020. Uh, just a month and the, the year is all I have. And then very, very last line is the uh, alcohol by volume percentage, of which the first mead was 14.9%. Uh, even at 14.9%, that mead had a little bit of a kick to it. Uh, <laughs> usually when I open up one of my wines at 16, 18%, I don't, I don't notice it at all. I mean, I can just down the entire bottle and, you know, what of it but this one yeah this one had a little bit of an effect it it, it, it didn't hit you immediately uh there was one scene uh when i was doing the video that because i was having problems with uh, my cell phone uh having only a 10 minute recording limit and uh i was just babbling on well beyond 10 minutes and when it got to some of the good parts it was like after that 10 minute uh, mark and i didn't know the cell phone had turned off so I ended up having to repeat that scene and then the second time i did it i finally figured out why the, the, the cell phone was cutting off and had to repeat the scene a third time i actually opened that particular bottle three times and um because I was doing a tasting I actually had to pour like you know half a glass and I ended up drinking half a glass for each take and yeah by that third take yeah I was I was starting to feel it <laughs> three sheets to the wind so that's why another reason why I'm kind of glad uh, no I am glad that I got the new camera because I've got uh, uh, 30 minute recording time and in, in, in high definition and I've got uh, unlimited live stream uh, Hi, capabilities. Hey, I didn't see it. Yes, yes he has. <laughs> yes, my daughter has, has she's, she's, she's made her appearance. <laughs> I wonder how long that's going to last. <laughs> but thanks for stopping by, daughter. <laughs> Who's next? Uh, okay, Brad Palmer says, I ended up with five gallons of banana wine fermenting. Mm. I went to buy bananas from my local store and they were going to throw the throw out a box of ripe fruit no that way. I bought for less than half price. Wonderful. If only they knew. Yes. Hello from Morocco, hairless monkey. <laughs> great. The channel helped him uh, enjoy a great, uh, great wine with a quarter of the cost. Couldn't find any yeast nutrient around here. Okay. Well, again, uh, I have yet to have a batch of wine not uh, go through the entire fermentation process because of lack of yeast nutrients. Uh, I know in my earlier videos, uh, I was... Pamela, <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, as I was saying... Uh, <laughs> I, I've yet to have a batch of wine that has not uh, gone through fermentation because it did not have uh, uh, proper yeast nutrients. Uh, like I was saying in my earlier videos, uh, I was under the uh, uh, 
I won't say delusion, but basically uh, I was in, in the camp that believed that uh, raisins were a yeast nutrient substitute. And uh, since then, I've come to you know realize that raisins really, I mean, they provide such a tiny little amount of, uh, of, of nutrient that it's really not worth it. You're really adding raisins now just for the flavoring and, and, and uh, uh, you're not adding it for yeast nutrients. But again, uh, Nothing has not fermented because it did not have added yeast nutrients. Okay, next. Blue Jesus says the whole family. Yes, the whole family is here today. Um, Brad Palmer says you can use raisins for some nutrient if you think your yeast needs it. And Lujitsu, I rarely use nu uh, nutrients, only if I make something super high, AVB 17% plus. Okay. Well, I mean, you can, it, depending on the wine yeast that you're using, you can get that well above 18%. I mean, <laughs> even though I use Red Star and my primary wine yeast of choice is the uh, Premier Blanc, the, uh, the uh, I'm not going to go get it. Uh, it's in the blue pack. Uh, we'll take it well up to 18%. Uh, Premier Blanc is designed for, I think, uh, 15 or 16 percent and, and the blue pack goes well up to 18 percent so uh another way of doing it although it's not well i don't know you probably could do it with meat as well just simply uh, uh just add more honey or add more sugar uh during the initial prime uh fermentation uh the one batch and i'm going to catch up on some of these uh, que uh, questions in a second uh the one batch of uh blackberry yeah, the blackberry one that I did where I misread the original ingredients and added four pounds of sugar instead of four cups of sugar, uh, that one went up to 20.4% uh, before I figured out how to fix fix the problem by, by watering it down. But yeah, uh, more sugar will get you higher ABB. Uh, more honey, I guess, will do it as well. Uh, wine yeast, I'm sorry, uh, yeast nutrients. Didn't know that could bring up uh, your AV, uh, AVB as well. Next. Okay. And Lujisu says, I, I use Go Firm in the beginning or Firm Aid. No. <laughs> uh, yeah, both of those are uh, nutrients uh, that, if you look at most uh, uh, technical winemaking channels, yeah, pretty much you'll find that, yeah, they're going to recommend that you start out, if you're doing wines, they're going to start out by saying that uh, you need to use a. a uh, Camden tablets or sulfites uh, to help sterilize the fruits. On this channel, you'll see me uh, uh, doing some degree of, um, of, of boiling or at least putting the fruit in boiling water uh, and letting, come, letting it come down to room temperature to both A, kill off some of the uh, wild, uh, wild yeast and uh, to some degree some of the bacteria. That's my way of getting around the, uh, the Camden tablet issue. Uh, you'll see them um, uh, you'll see them also adding uh, sulfites. Usually they'll say sulfites between rackings and also sulfites at the end uh, to help uh, stop fermentation so you can start back sweetening it and uh, to reduce oxidation of your wine. Uh, I mean, yeah, technical wine channels will say you need to add this, you need to add this, you need to add that. And uh, on this channel, and there are several others like it, uh, no, we don't, we don't add anything uh, beyond sugar, fruit, yeast, water, sometimes honey. Uh, so we keep it as natural as possible, and it works just fine. Uh, when I have a bad batch, uh, I'll let you all know about it. If I have a fermentation that stops that I can't restart by using uh, uh, a more potent, adding some additional, uh, more high, higher potency yeast, uh, I'll let you know about it. But so far, it hasn't happened. Lujitsu says I didn't I don't sulfide or clarify with chemicals only time good for you I mean that's that's how they would been making wine for thousands of years between eight to ten thousand years I mean that's the way it's been done um, okay next oh, that's it oh, that was it mm -hmm. oh all right uh, well I remember once you talking about uh, trying a wine without adding yeast and using just the natural yeast. I think that you oh, said Oh, yeah. Once. No, well, I don't recall what I said, but I do know what I was going to do about that. And was there one thing I was going to do? No, that could be last night. I did that. Um, 
Yeah, with regards to uh, doing a, a batch of wine really naturally, <laughs> uh, I haven't worked. I, I looked into it. Uh, there, uh, I was kind of waiting until uh, more of the uh, uh, some of the organic fruit was in season that I know would have uh, a coating of yeast on it. Uh, that hasn't been uh, killed off by irradiation <laughs> that they're using for <laughs> increasing shelf life. Uh, I think the next time I get a batch of, of grapes, that uh, organic grapes that have not been have been nuked, uh, that I know still will still have some of the natural yeast on it, uh, I'll use those uh, kind of to get the process started. Uh, even though I'm, you will not see me make a, a batch of wine from store-bought grapes because I have yet to see a review that says that has turned out well. <laughs> but at least I can get the yeast off of it uh, to do it. Um, again, that's something that's still in the works. Uh, it's something that I had had on my uh, uh, content calendar. Uh, but last week I had a storage drive failure. <laughs> it, it just died. It's just gone. Uh, I managed to save a few of my spreadsheets, but uh, it's dead. It's, it, well, that's another expense for another time. I'll worry about that later. In any event, uh, yeah, it's something I will do later on this year. We've got an interesting question from the Candy Floss King. Okay. I got a wine book from the 60s, and there are recipes for carrot wine and even nettle wine. Would you ever consider doing either one of them? Uh... I might consider doing the carrot wine because I keep seeing that one come up. Uh, before it, someone brings it up during this live stream, no, I will not be doing a rhubarb because I don't know what it tastes like and I'm not going to experiment at this point in time. Rhubarb is good. You like it. Really? I'll have to try. I'll have to eat one first and then determine whether or not it's something I want to make a wine out of. A carrot, I know what a carrot tastes like, okay? <laughs> <laughs> I have a frame of reference for a carrot, but okay. Uh, carrot possibly uh, later this year. Okay, and Brad Palmer uh, says the uh, carrot wine is lovely, but you need to let it age. It tastes like mud <laughs> when it's young. <laughs> I can say the same thing about that beetroot wine. Uh, there is no way I'm even thinking about tasting that. Normally, when I rack it, I'll, I'll, you know, take it like four or five drops, and then I'll, you know, see where the wine is going. But that root, uh, that beetroot wine, I'm sorry, I won't even bother trying to taste that until, until it's ready for bottling and backspeeding. <laughs> it just didn't have an appealing aroma while I was doing the actual uh, cooking of the, uh, of the of the beetroot. So we'll see. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> And Brad, you're right. Rhubarb rocks. <laughs> okay, Adam Keeney says, what do you use to top off between rackings? Plain water, a finished wine, a sugar solution? Uh, at first, I was just using plain water. Nope, not going to the refrigerator or freezer to get it. Uh, then I learned that uh, during your initial fermentation, uh, during primary, if you make just a little bit extra, about a cup extra, uh, you can actually, once you've um, racked that into your secondary, uh, you, that cup of extra uh, uh, must, uh, you can actually freeze that. And then when you're ready to do your subsequent rackings, you can just simply thaw it out and simply use that uh, to make up the difference. Uh, in my case, because I start out with, and I did not bring, yeah, yeah, because I start out using uh, four liter uh, carboys, uh, usually my first rack will end up going into a, a one gallon uh, carboy. So I, I don't really um, have much headspace to have to worry about there. But any subsequent rackings, yeah, I'll break out uh, uh, the, some of the frozen stuff, thaw it out, add it in, and then uh, that, that takes care of the headspace problem. Uh, the ABV of the apple mead. What did that turn out to be? Uh, the apple mead is one I didn't grab. No, it's still sitting in secondary. Uh, I think it needs to be racked. Uh, if you want to know the, well, no, if you want looking for the final AVB, I don't have that. Uh, the initial uh, gravity reading, uh, I don't remember off the top of my head, and I'm. I, I do need to get up and, and grab a bottle of wine for my 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 lovely assistant here, but uh, I don't I don't have the numbers on that just yet. I won't know that until after it's been uh, 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 
Yeah, I won't really know that until after I start the process of, of, of step back uh, sweetening it. Uh, if I let it go dry and take a reading, okay, I'll have that initial reading for my AVB. But since I'm going to be doing step back sweetening where I'm going to start adding sugar or adding honey uh, and then uh, letting it uh, front, see if it's going to re start refermenting uh, uh, for about a week or two, you know, about two or three weeks. If there's been a, ch a change in the hydrometer reading, then I know that fermentation has not yet been complete. Uh, so I can then start adding uh, some additional sugar. Uh, if after another three week period, uh, fermentation or the hydrometer reading hasn't changed, then I know that fermentation has been complete and I can add as much sugar or honey that I want without having to worry about re-fermentation. Uh, re but each time I add that and fermentation restarts, then it changes the, uh, the, the AVB level. In other words, I have to add the difference between, well, that's another, another uh, video that I'm planning to do later on. Uh, but no, I'm, I'm not going to know that until after it's been finally back sweetened uh, with the final AVB of that uh, particular batch of mead is going to be. Waiting for it, though. Okay. Lujitsu's turned out at 15.75 and came out semi-dry. Okay. One second. And the floor show. You know, I can go get those. <laughs> <laughs> you might end up having to. Uh, this is the apple mead, which is still uh, still in secondary. And yeah, it's about the point where it needs to be racked. I haven't done it. No, I racked it uh, last, last month, about uh, two weeks ago. Um, the starting gravity for the apple mead was uh, 1.104. Uh, when I racked it, uh, it was down to uh, 1.004. So uh, it hasn't. It's the numbers are trending down, but uh, it's still fermenting basically. Uh, so I'm not even thinking about back sweetening this one uh, anytime soon. When the hydrometer reading hits uh, 0.944, 0.994, or uh, 0.990, then uh, then that's when I know it's time to start uh, the step back sweetening process to see what uh, uh, what happens after that. But yeah, I still should grab that bottle of wine. Which one? I, you know, I had to get that. I'm gonna grab a bottle of that uh, grapefruit. I'll grab it. Uh, you'll find that actually, those you you'll find in the bedroom next to the uh, uh, that storage thing next to the bed. That was actually kind of. I, I, no longer mine. Mm -hmm. This is one of the reasons why I got one of these. <laughs> okay, because what just happened? It's hap she still got the clip. That's happened to me on several occasions. I mean, I still, I still use this when I do my videos, uh, but I don't use these when I live streams because it's really a pain in the butt I have to work with. Any, anywho, <laughs> all right. Um, Pyramid. I didn't bring, well, I haven't started a pyramid yet, but guess what? I have a pair of wine. It's, it's clearing up very nicely. Again, it needs to be racked, but I, I have no idea what the final ABV of that's going to be as well. Uh, let's see. You good? I'm okay. good. All right. Yeah, grapefruit wine was actually pretty good. And this was uh, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Yeah, it's uh, 9 months old now. It's drinkable age. <laughs> um, your pair, your pair, me, that's kind of early for, for me. Five or six months for me. Well, for that particular batch of mead. Hmm. Um, I can't read that. Uh, 
I leave it in the basement. It keeps a per perfect temperature for secondary. Okay. You, jiu jitsu or lu jitsu leaves their wine in the basement and it keeps it a perfect temperature for secondary. I saw that, but then I saw uh, Pete, uh, Peter Pete's. <laughs> <laughs> you guys be making some, some very interesting. <laughs> interesting. Unique. <laughs> it would be the, the phrase I think we want to use. Banana avocado. Avocado. That would be interesting. I wonder if the banana would come out more than the avocado. The avocado is... It has a very mild flavor. Yeah. I can barely taste avocado, which is why I don't really uh, order it when, with anything anymore. Because um, I can't really taste it. But avocado has is so oily. Ah. So does, does the oil... Do you get... Do you have trouble with the oil? Is there an Peter oil slick Pete? on the top of your carb? <laughs> <laughs> I guess is the question. <laughs> with regards to the six week issue, um, when I was first starting out with wine, before I started the channel, it really wasn't that much before. <laughs> Before I started the channel, uh, my first batches of wine were the uh, uh, the Welsh's grape juice wines, and I was making them in the original two quart containers. And I was actually beginning to drink those in like four to five weeks. Well, starting to drink, I usually would drink it completely by the end of four or five weeks. Uh, and it was only because I realized that there was always a heavy layer of of, of yeast coating the bottom of the wine glass and the wines were never clear and it just got to the point where we began to realize that if you just simply a if you wait it'll clear up and b if you wait it'll get better and that was the hardest thing for me to learn how to do was to actually wait for wine to finish fermenting and actually becoming a better better product uh which is why i've got god i've lost count i've got over 20 ish <laughs> more than 20 uh carboys uh, sitting in my uh, my my fermenting room, I guess is what I'll call it. Uh, all of which are, if, if they're not, if they have finished fermenting, they're simply clearing up before bottling. Uh, and even after bottling, um, they're going to sit there for a bit before I decide to, to drink them, you know, just to open up a bottle of wine and drink. Now, Brad Palmer made a pear wine a few mm -hmm. years ago and made the mistake of trying to make it sparkling. Only three <laughs> bottles survived. And he did use pressurized bottles. Well, the thing about that is that uh, the sparkling wines that I've done to date have all been by accident. <laughs> it's still a video that I'm, I'm planning to do to do it to do it on purpose. But uh, the pressurized bottles, if you're not in the know, these are the bottles or the type of bottles that he's referring to. Uh, definitely, uh, 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 if you try and use a regular wine bottle. Uh, and you uh, didn't properly degas your your wine or mead, and all that pressure is building up. Uh, if you're lucky, you'll just pop the cork. Uh, if you're if you're not lucky, you'll break the bottle. It'll, it it won't even actually explode. It'll just simply break. <laughs> okay, I've had that happen once. I popped a few corks, but um, I've only had one bottle explode uh, because I didn't properly degas it. That was before I bought. Uh, my uh, my degassing wine uh, wand, and I'm now properly doing you know the, the process of degassing. But <laughs> yeah, it, it can't happen. <laughs> it does. Uh, I'm gonna get a corkscrew. Let me know what's. Uh... Yes. Peter Pete's avocado is in secondary. He says it mellows out the banana peel tanning, and he carbonated. I want to try that. Oh, here you go. No. <laughs> no, I would try the banana avocado. I think that would be good. All right. I am not going to break out the good wine glasses. I'm going to break out the everyday stuff. Uh, you have to do that. I'm breaking the cord. It's quite all right. Now, uh, no, no, is a bit of a kind of sore when it comes to opening up wine bottles. With you, a real corkscrew. She, she, she doesn't know how to use a winged corkscrew with all of its simplicity. <laughs> okay, a few turns, a little bit of downward pressure, 
and you get that satisfying sound. Uh, I mean, I think I've got a, well, eventually I'll have to break down and get a weighted corkscrew, but it's not like on the top of my list uh, for the simple reason that this works. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'll put it on my gift list for you. <laughs> uh, this uh, grapefruit wine was started on my very first live stream, which was a which was a, a stop motion affair. Okay, uh, the equipment that I had at the time just wasn't really up to the task. I didn't buy it to do live streams from the get-go. This was back in 2015. Um, it, it, you use what you got, but this again was the was the wine that was made uh, uh, during that effort. I'll give you that. This. Um, I was kind of surprised. Uh, this is your your basic. Uh, um, Trying to think of the, the brand name that I used. I mean, any 100% uh, juice with no so uh, fights will work. Uh, but uh, I forgot. <laughs> My mind is going. Uh, we'll pass on that. Dan just bottled uh, his first banana wine. Wasn't very good. Hope it turned. Uh, hope it better's in a year. Before I get to that. Mel Pony, I'm going to get that right eventually because I can see the accent marks over that last E. Uh, the best corkscrew is the one that works. You're right about that. You're <laughs> not the, helping. It's the one you have most fun with. <laughs> um. I came across the same. Okay. Uh, he's thanking Brad for the info. Uh, he's got empty Prosecco bottles. He was planning to use to ship uh, non-sparkling wine to a friend in Sweden. Oh, I want to go to Sweden. Uh, would they be okay for sparkling wine with champagne corks? Well, that's not a question that I'm going to answer because <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Uh, but again, that was shout That was a shout out to uh, Brad. Uh, so Brad, you can pretty much respond to that uh, when you're ready. Uh, okay, again, um, even though I'm doing pretty good, actually the last few live streams I've done quite well with answering uh, all questions that have come up uh, during the stream. Uh, if it does get to a point, and it won't happen tonight, but uh, if I'm doing a live stream and it's just me, and uh, at some point when I've got a lot of uh, 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 comments or chats that are scrolling across the screen. If I don't get a chance to answer, then when I'm watching it in review uh, later on uh, and I see that question, I'll usually post that in the uh, uh, community section of the uh, channel page and uh, we'll have an answer for you there. Uh, if you've taken the time to ask the question, then uh, I will uh, eventually take the time to uh, give you an answer. Um, uh, let's see what else. Um, once again, uh, channel memberships are always a good thing. I uh, wish you all would uh, would uh, help support the channel that way. Uh, super chats and super stickers uh, are always a wonderful way. Uh, direct uh, donations to the PayPal account eliminates the 30% cut that YouTube takes <laughs> from, from all super chats. <laughs> uh, there's always a link for that, uh, usually at the bottom uh, in the comment section or the description section uh, once it's uh, uh, video has gone, uh, it's been processed. And um, yeah, that basically was, oh, uh, I have to uh, make mention of the fact that I am an Amazon affiliate uh, so that uh, when you click on any of the links in the uh, for the items in the uh, description uh, section as well, that's an Amazon link, uh, I do get a, <laughs> I do get a cut. <laughs> A very small cut uh, from that, that purchase. It doesn't. It's not charging you anymore. It's just taking from Amazon's profits, which is a good thing. The thing I like about the uh, the uh, grapefruit wine was that 
usually when you're doing some of the lighter uh, wines, uh, the fruit flavor kind of like fades into the background. You can just barely taste it. Uh, and I know from the onset, a lot of that was because I was using the uh, minimum amount of fruit in those recipes uh, that you saw early on, uh, which was the minimum, the, the range is between three to five pounds of fruit per gallon. And well, since I didn't have any money, <laughs> I'm not buying four or five pounds of fruit uh, for, for a video. Uh, I was using the three pound minimum, so the, uh, the flavors in some of the earlier wines was was, was a bit on the light side. Uh, with the um, grapefruit wine, that grapefruit flavor comes through. Uh, it's it's a real good balance between uh, the grapefruit flavor and, and the alcohol, which came in at 14.4%. Uh, uh, so the alcohol really isn't, uh, the aroma of the alcohol really isn't there. Uh, uh, it's uh, it's still a wine that I think uh, could probably benefit by going uh, the 12 month distance before uh, cracking open the bottles, but uh, eight months is not bad. Uh, I think chilled would be a, uh, an ideal way for this wine to be served. Uh, it has already been back sweetened. I've already done the video, so you can check that out at a later time. What got said. Okay, uh, Peter Pete says the best way for a banana is to chop up all chop it all up including the peels leave in lukewarm water for about 24 hours add a lemon and peel let it stay another 24 hours in a simple syrup okay which is something i can't do on this channel because of time involved in doing it that way uh in terms of leaving the banana in the peels uh yes that probably is a, a better way of doing it uh, and uh, yeah, that is a better way of doing it. Uh, I've done it. I think the last banana thing that I did, I did it just, well, I left the bananas in the peel. The first time I did the banana, when I did the banana wine, I took the uh, bananas out of the banana peels and just uh, fermented those uh, in separate bags. Uh, but when I did the uh, banana strawberry wine, yeah, that's when I used uh, the entire banana just chopped up the banana with the peels on and just put those in the bags. It's just easier to deal with. Lujitsu had a question. Any ideas on a lemon wine using banana for tannin? Well, it's no longer a lemon wine. <laughs> You're adding other stuff than lemons. Uh, no, I haven't given it a thought. Uh, I've only done two, well, three now. Uh, I've done two lemon wines. One would be the original lemon wine, uh, which was just, you know, lemons. And then I followed that up with a lemon lime wine, which is actually sitting right there, <laughs> ready to be bottled. Uh, uh, I did back sweetening three weeks ago. I need to do another uh, hydrometer reading. And um, um, yeah, see how it goes from there. And I also did the lemon mead, but a, uh, a lemon, where is it? Oh, a lemon yes. wine using bananas for tannic. Uh, oh, I got it now. Uh, no, I don't really know the uh, uh, degree in which the bananas are going to provide tannins. I would have to look that up. Uh, the usual method that you'll see me uh, adding tannins uh, to the wines and meads would be to use the uh, uh, black tea, boiled black tea method. Uh, in lieu of that, you can always use uh, oak chips. Uh, to also add tannin, uh, but uh, to use bananas, don't know about that. Okay. Mel Pomene, I hope I'm saying that correctly. Do you boil the must after or use a sulfide to kill anything that could get in there? Uh, no, I don't. And I am looking at... you. You, the boiling. Well, the question is is basically one where you you want to kill the yeast at the end of fermentation before you back sweeten it, so you don't restart fermentation. Also, to uh, uh, make it a bit uh, uh, more shelf stable, as it were. Uh, I don't do that. I'm. It's it's on my to do list to do a video on that uh, technique. Uh, I would much prefer doing it that way instead of the step back sweeping method because at least that way I don't have to worry about uh, bumping up the the alcohol level uh, as a result of the step back sweeping method. Uh, I've done a little bit of research. 
I actually uh, saw the two methods that were used by city steading and uh, uh, their techniques are, are such that I, I need to find a better way of doing it, a much simpler way of doing it uh, before I do a video on it. Um, but it is something that I want to do just in a different sort of way. <laughs> Are we? We are. Should be here. Yes. Oh, I have not seen. Really, it's the first time I've heard of that technique of using bananas as tannin. Um, but okay. One get. One gallon is two banana peels. <laughs> And then Mel Pone was directing his question, her uh, question, their question, to Peter Pete about the banana process. Okay. Hmm. What have we got? Um, 21 in the current. The numbers always, they never concur. Uh, I've either got 19 or I've got 21. Uh, this is average uh, for my channel, uh, which is why. The live chats are at a slow, steady pace where you can actually accommodate and respond to everyone, uh, which is which is great. Uh, I didn't want to, but I, uh, Rod Ray. I didn't mm -hmm. want to, but I eventually started polysorbate if I need to back sweeten. Having used polysorbate, uh, when I, uh, when I first, well, when I, my first few batches of wine, because I wasn't quite sure the process I wanted to use uh, for back sweetening, uh, I, I decided to opt for the bottle sweetening method where you don't do any sweetening at all until you uh, have cracked open the bottle and, uh, and, and you added sugar or sweeteners or simple syrup at that point. Uh, I went from there to start to using um, uh, a non-fermentable sugar, uh, yeah, xylitol, which worked great, <laughs> quite honestly, but the, the cost of using xylitol or, or mannitol, either one, uh, was such that it just wasn't cost effective. Uh, I mean, like a one pound bag of that was like fifteen, sixteen dollars, and you could maybe sweeten one or two batches of wine or one or two gallons of wine. It just wasn't cost effective. I mean, it solved a lot of hope, a whole lot of problems. I mean, you didn't have to worry about restarting fermentation. You get the sweetness you want. You can just bottle it. Everything was great, but it's just too, just not cost efficient. Uh, so that's when I decided sugar was cheaper, and if I have to do the step back sweetening method, uh, then so be it for now. But yeah, uh, no, if you can use a non-fermentable sugar, great, go for it. They're ask Dan is asking what I think of your pineapple wine. I don't think you've shared the pineapple wine with No, me. I haven't. Uh, I have not I shared. can't say. It's, it's getting better, considering the bottle that opened yesterday. But they're not asking you, they're asking me. Uh, I think I have two bottles left. I know one I'm going to ha have to save for the one you're tasting. Uh, I think the reason why I cracked open the pineapple wine yesterday was because uh, I wanted to have an extra bottle available so that when I started uh, bottling, probably this... Um, I have I, I had eight bottles yesterday available to uh, to use for the next batch of bottling, uh, next batch of wine to bottle those. Uh, now I have nine. Uh, uh, one of those nine was the was the bottle I used yesterday. <laughs> I just I just wanted to free up a bottle. The pineapple wine is getting better <laughs> over time, uh, but I would have to think about whether or not I want, would want to make it again. But again, they're not <laughs> asking you; they're asking me. You know, I've got a twenty. You want. I don't have to work to, tomorrow. You want to come let's over get and let's, let's get toasted. Uh, drink some wine. Get, you know what? Okay. <laughs> I do not have to work tomorrow. Let's get toasted. 
What's tomorrow? Sunday. Sunday. Oh, is it? Mm-hmm. One good thing about being retired is that every day is a weekend. <laughs> you don't you don't have to worry about what day it is. <laughs> but we can still open up that pineapple wine and see what it tastes like and answer that question. <laughs> Maybe on the the next no, that's the uh, mid month midweek live stream. Still working out times and date uh, date for that. Uh, maybe the next uh, monthly live stream. We'll we'll see. Ooh, pineapple coconut. Brad Palmer says pineapple coconut would be good for the future. Just in that case, be- made sure because I know somebody was probably going to think about asking me about that coconut wine. Here it is. It's still in the works. You can see that, uh, yeah, it definitely needs to be uh, racked at this point. But uh, it's still got it. <laughs> I have no idea what it's going to taste like. I've never made it before. Uh, using it's the first time I think I used cinnamon. It's the first time I used uh, uh, coconut, to be honest with you. A lot of ingredients went cloves. A lot of ingredients went into this that I didn't know you could put in wine. So, again, uh, it's... it's <laughs> It's still in process. I'm with Rod. Rod <laughs> says, come on, break out the pineapple. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Especially since I just cracked open that bottle yesterday. In fact, yep, yeah, it's right over here. <laughs> so he taunts me with the empty <laughs> bottle. Really? Like I said. <laughs> It got it got opened yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Richard Alfonso says, should I put it put it in after first rack or should I re-rack? What's the first part of the question? That's a good question. Oh, oh in my first time making wine, I'm mixing in the potassium sorbate. Okay. And I want to know how much to put in, and do I have to mix it with a drill, and then uh, after should should he um, put it back in or re-rack? Okay, uh, Richard. Uh, again, this channel does not use well, no longer uses sulfites, so I really can't answer that question for you. In terms, of especially not how much you have to refer to uh, uh, the directions that came with uh, uh, the package uh, for the sulfites. Um, no, I can't answer that question for you because sulfites are not or no longer used on this channel. Sorry. But if anyone out there has an uh, answer to, uh, to Richard's question, please chime in. See, all of them, all of them want me to taste. No, all of them <laughs> want you to, to see if they can get you tipsy. <laughs> Which for her, well, no. It's not it, it, hard. It, it used to be kind of easy. You know, it still it, is. It didn't take much, but she still is. She, 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 some of the stuff that she now drinks would no. put, would put me under the table. I mean, I don't drink it. I, I just you not. I just have it in case I have guests. Yeah, but you have no problems in joining in with your guests. <laughs> I mean, uh, what was it? Suju uh, uh, Suju? No. Uh, uh, bijou. Bijou. Yes, I got a bijou in China. It was wonderful. It's an acquired taste. <laughs> okay, I'm going to do that way. <laughs> um, all right. No, before I do that, I still... Uh, okay, both mics are still live. Good. This is the first time I've done a uh, uh, live stream with uh, with a guest. So yeah, there was a lot of prep work and you know, and getting the mics to work, uh, well, both mics to work, and uh, all of that. So I'm plus the fact that I've got new camera, new software, which I think is what's causing the uh, the new delay that I'm getting on my end. Uh, so I've got to work around that, probably with a video capture card and an HDMI cable to speed the process along. I think this uh, USB two cable that. Uh, cameras is asking me to use uh, I think that's slowing down the process but again that's a technical issue uh, that I'll work through uh, later on where are we um Joshua Brashear uh, the more people that try the wine the better it will be in the long run yes yes 
And Rod Ray, what is the <laughs> most terrible wine or mead you've ever made? Uh, was, it that, was it the rice? It was. Uh, the worst wine that I made was my attempt at making a rice wine. I'll put it to you this way. Uh, I made two videos on that. One was the initial making, which had an initial tasting at that point. And then I, there was a follow up video about two or three weeks later where the wine had cleared up, at least the portion of it had finally cleared up and I did a second tasting that way. It was better, but my whole take on the whole rice wine issue was that uh, I, th I tried to put a happy face on it, but it was such that I not only uh, deleted the initial video, I deleted the second video, the following video as well, uh, and those are no longer public. Basically, I just took those videos off offline, okay, because if I can't produce something that's, that's worthy or worthwhile, uh, then I don't really see a need to have it left on my channels for somebody to spend a, a month trying to make something and then have it turned out where it's it's an acquired taste okay <laughs> Richard Alfonso wants to know when do you know to degas the wine for bottling um, well I mean when your wine goes clear and you're ready for bottling this way. like for instance I don't know if you can make this out this uh, older floral wine that I made I mean this thing is actually ready for bottling now, but before I bottle it, I would most definitely want to run a uh, gassing wine through it, just as a matter of course. Even if the wine is finished fermenting, uh, there's still maybe a lot of CO2 that's that's basically binded or or, or that's been binded uh, to to the to the uh, to the wine itself that still needs to be released. Uh, I mean, you might still see activity uh, in your airlock thinking that, uh, okay, fermentation has not yet been complete, but it has, and it's just simply uh, outgassing a lot of that uh, uh, CO2 that's still trapped in. Uh, I mean, if you wait it out long enough, then yeah, you probably can skip degassing uh, altogether, but uh, it's better to err on the, on the side of caution uh, to avoid the possibility of, of, of uh, uh, pop corks or, or, or exploding bottles and just simply running degassing just before bottling. And Brad Palmer says, you know, if, the, if that coconut wine works out, there's going to be a bunch of us making it. <laughs> I don't even know why I made that coconut. I knew it was done. I, I needed something for a live stream. And I needed something that was a bit more involved than just the usual store-bought juice type of wine setup, which is basically you know, five, at best, ten minutes, you know, of uh, putting something together for a live stream. That's not too involved. This was probably the most involved thing that I did for a live stream. I think it was the last thing I did for a live stream. Nope, I did the pier one after that. Or was it? Yeah. Anyway, um, this wine had better be awesome. That's all I got to say. Because... <laughs> I just did it for the hell of it, <laughs> not, not because I had any, any any recommendations to do it, but apparently once I did it, or after I did it, I got a, started getting a lot of comments about people who had um, who had a lot of questions about it uh, during subsequent live streams. Somebody always brings it up, which means that I always have to go back and, and and go and go grab the jug, even though there's really not much happening with it, you know. I mean, it's not clearing up. I mean, again, there is that layer of sediment that I just stirred up. Uh, I don't know if this thing will ever go clear. Uh, I don't think I used any any peptic enzymes to, to help out the process there. I think this one was just straight out, uh, straight up uh, mixing up and putting in the primary fermenter. Oh, speaking of uh, peptic enzyme, uh, yeah, even though this is a very natural winemaking channel, uh, Yes, you will occasionally see me using a peptic enzyme because it works by removing a lot of that pectin haze that um, certain fruits like strawberries, certainly strawberries, uh, and a few others uh, will develop uh, that will take forever to clear, okay? Um, it will eventually clear up on its own, but it takes forever to clear. And because I had to reuse a lot of these carboys, Early, early on, very quickly, I couldn't just put them in a carboy and let them sit up, sit around for months and months and months. You know, and while I'm steadily producing wine after wine after wine, I, I needed to reuse these carboys. So I started using peptic enzyme, and 
it it just simply sped up the process. So yeah, occasionally you will see me doing it. Uh, probably not as much as I had been doing it because I now have more time and more carboys and I can wait it out. But if you see me using it, yeah, that's my one cheat. We're gonna catch up. Okay, Peter Pete said, uh, I made almond milk and grape. It's delicious on ice cream. I would love to try that. Okay, and Brad Palmer. <laughs> Do you need some enzyme for rice wine to break the starches down into sugar? Uh, amylase or something like that? Don't know. Uh, no, I don't know. Uh, I didn't use anything. That was completely natural uh, based on uh, some of the uh, recipes that I've seen, uh, some of the videos that I've seen. Uh, I thought I can give it a shot. But in terms of making it better, I have no clue. Don't know. So, Paul Mahane. Thank you, Paul. Enjoying my strawberry rhubarb melomel. And rhubarb is wonderful. You like it. I'll, I'll, I'll make you something with rhubarb. You Really, I'll make something for you with rhubarb. You'll really enjoy it. Uh, love your videos. It appears the pineapple wine must be good. You didn't want to share. <laughs> I do share many of the bottles of wine that I produce with No No. The problem with it is that most of the time, in fact, all of the time, in fact, I don't think I've got one wine yet that's at 12 months and I've made it to the 12 month distance, which means that the wine really isn't complete. Uh, there is still that uh, layer of harshness on the back end, which is uh, due primarily due to the fact that. Uh, uh, melolactic fermentation has not yet been complete. Uh, malic acid has not been converted into lactic acid, which kind of mellows things out. Uh, so I generally don't give her as many bottles that, that I think she, she, uh, I would like her to try because I know they're not done. They're half done for the most part. Uh, and now that I know that she invites friends to partake in the uh, experience of tasting the wines. And they love them. That I know aren't done. <laughs> they, they love them. Which they may say they may love them, but in my opinion, that comes down to, hey, somebody's offering me free wine. You know, who am I to complain? You know? <laughs> and let's see. We were talking, uh, there was a conversation about hazy wines here. Uh, Lujitsu says, I don't mind a hazy meat or wine, but if I'm giving it to somebody, it has to be clear. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Uh, yep. I, I don't know if there, I can say there are two types of friends. One who just has been given a, <laughs> a free bottle of wine <laughs> or one who's been who's, who's used to seeing crystal clear bottles of wine from the store and that's what they, they, they tend to expect. Uh, I mean, it's just the haziness for the most part. If it's not a pectin haze, it's usually just uh, the yeast hasn't settled out. I mean, neither of which are harmful by any means. Uh, uh, it's just a question of um, uh, appearance. That's all that is. Um, Brad Palmer says to make you a rhubarb crumble. I can do that. I can do that. The real friend would tell you if it's not good. That is correct. Well, yeah, but see, the problem with No No here is that she's agreeable to virtually. You can't you, you can't go to a restaurant and be served something that, quite frankly, you're ready to call the waiter to have the chef come out so that you can say basically that, you know, what you've just been served should not have been served, you know, to, to, to anyone, putting it politely. Uh, she won't do that. We have never had that experience. We have. Greenville, when we went to that, uh, that hotel restaurant. Or tried to, oh, yeah, that yeah, was they, really they, bad. They, they served. That was bad. I ordered a, um, uh, a lobster bisque. That, uh, it was bad, and and it was basically, it was like eating a lick. Uh, it was like a salt lick. Mm -hmm. Okay, it was just nothing but salt. And uh, when the waitress came back, I I I, I expressed my you know, I was mad at her, you know, <laughs> anything like that. But I kind of expressed my displeasure with the fact that you know that 
I thought what I was served was, was, was garbage. And the only reason why I ate it was, was because I was hungry. You know, I was really hungry because we had it's issues bad. trying to. Anyway, yeah, so I'll say something. Um, she won't, so I can, I, I can offer her anything, really. <laughs> no, but see, but see, I know you, and I can tell you if it's crap. <laughs> I can tell you if it's crap. I will not be, not, not uh, mince words with you. I will let you know. Uh, Robert Moore, hello, this is my first time watching the live stream. Well, hello, Robert. Thank you for joining us. Uh, pretty much, uh, this is how these live streams go. <laughs> uh, maybe not early on. It takes a few minutes for people to start showing up. But basically, uh, I'm not seeing some of the more regulars that I normally get, uh, but they're here in spirit, I'm sure. <laughs> Is that your son? Yes. Well, I will be honest with him. I promise. <laughs> uh, yeah. So the, apparently, both my <clears throat> both my son and daughter have, have have jumped in. I'm quite sure my daughter probably checked out long ago. <laughs> She's hi, dad, bye, dad, sort of thing. And was, my son, more than likely, he might stick around because I just gave him my old laptop. So he might. <laughs> <laughs> So you might stick around for a minute, you know. Uh, but I'm just saying, okay. Uh. Oh, okay. So it's Gory, Gore, Gory, one to one. I watch the streams uh, back, but usually they're at a time when I can't watch live. So glad that you are able to make it live this time. Welcome. Well, I'm glad that you made it. Uh, again, uh, the mid-month, mid-week live streams uh, coming up in two weeks. Uh, again, was done as a, is being done as an experiment. Uh, I'm trying to find a, a, a more suitable time for some of the people that I know are in different time zones uh, and actually different continents uh, to give them a, a, a shot at joining the live streams. Um, the last one, the first one that I did, the, which uh, was about two weeks ago, uh, had the usual number of people, about, about 19 or so, which was average. Right now I'm looking at 25, 26, which is a bit more than average. I guess I'm getting a little bit more popular. Uh, but yeah, I use the mid-month, mid-week -li live streams as, as kind of like to determine how I can accommodate those people who just basically aren't willing to wake up uh, uh, at a very odd hour of the night <laughs> to watch this live stream. Uh, Robert Pete, I'm sorry, Peter, Peter Pete. Pete. There we go. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, and he says his, he will give another 30 if you buy a five gallon gas carboy and make a great mead. Now, when you said that, I was thinking, okay, five gallons, I can always make some Welsh's grape juice wine. I can make, no. five, I can make five gallons of that and be perfectly happy, okay? But if it's got to be a mead, can you make a Welsh's grape juice mead? <laughs> I will supply the honey for the mead. I'm we can do that. Not from that 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 beekeeper, um, um, apicurist. Is that right, apicurist? Not apiary. Apicurist. Well, an apiary is a bee house. Ah, uh, okay. Apicurist is the beekeeper. Mm -hmm. I would just simply say beekeeper, but you know, there's some people that <laughs> in any event, don't buy honey from them because that was way too expensive. I, I'm just saying, I'm, I'm just throwing it out there. Uh, compared to the usual Walmart raw honey that I've been buying, as opposed to buying honey from an actual beekeeper, uh, it was almost like Three times, the, three times the price. But it was worth it. And you don't do it all the time. No, and, I don't. And this is my gift to support. I still have that other jar that you still need to tell me what you want to make. Uh, you, I'll use that uh, for whatever. Not going to be a rhubarb. I will use it. <laughs> <laughs> I will use that in conjunction with whatever it is you want me to make with it, and that will be that. Okay. Live stream time is epic. Okay, still uh, still late here in the UK, about 12 a.m. Yes, you are, you guys are 12 hours, or 12 hours, six hours ahead of us. 
but better than other homebrew YouTubers who stream at 2 a.m. in the morning my time. I'm going to try the next one. Let's see. This one started at 6 o'clock here in the U.S. Uh, Eastern Standard Time. Uh, the the mid-month, mid-week, I'm going to try doing that one probably, say, 3 o'clock in the afternoon here uh, to see what happens. Yeah, I'm going to try that at 3 o'clock. I just have to remember to do it. Peter Pete, number five, thank you very much. And what? you are right. Me or uh, honey from a beekeeper is best. And it costs a little more. It is worth it. Well, Peter made a Welsh mead. I mean, Welsh is grape juice. Welsh mead. I mean, I, I'm, I'm almost there. <laughs> uh, Peter, thank you very much again uh, for helping to support this channel. Again, this camera, even though I've got it, <laughs> it's still not paid for. <laughs> it's being paid on. So uh, again, that's where your donations uh, uh, in Super Chats, uh, that's where that money's headed for. Uh, just to let everyone know. So the, the hibiscus, was that a mead? It's um, Melpomene, on a, please, I hope I'm saying that correctly. Uh, one with hibiscus was not too bad, did benefit greatly for months of aging. Melopene, I think that's how that's pronounced. Mm -hmm. Yep. I'm sorry, what was the question? <laughs> well, we, they were discussing uh, oh. meads and uh, uh, hibiscus mead was suggested. Don't buy from Walmart, it's trash. Well, it's, it's, not, it's not your basic plain Jane uh, generic Honey, I mean, it's 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 one hundred percent raw honey. It's got every it's everything but the honeycomb is in there. Okay, even though they sell that too, uh, it's it's what I've got. Uh, it's it's close. I can't get to a beekeeper. Transportation issues. Uh, I have to make do with what I've got. Uh, yeah, sorry about that. That's why I'm here. Now, if I had more in the way of donations and the way of super chats and direct donations to the channel's PayPal account and more members, then yeah. But uh, until that happens, no. He never <laughs> listens to me. Make payment a mead made with grape juice. See, we're getting there. <laughs> 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 Ooh, you could try that elderflower. You know I like elderflower. As a mead? As a mead. Okay. That would be good. Although the elderflower is, well, you don't have to add added sugar. I don't know. I don't know what the process is. Well, so you make it, I'll drink it, and I'll let them know if it's good. Uh, I'll just see, I'll see if there are any recipes out there. I mean, I could probably wing it. Uh, to date, there's only been, I think, one recipe in which I've actually won uh decided to wing it and that was that strawberry papaya uh, because there was no recipes on the internet anywhere to uh, to produce that so I just used the standard process I can't wait for that uh, yeah no no donated some strawberries and she donated some papaya and uh, once she made it clear that uh, she didn't uh, bring these over just for me to eat <laughs> to snack <laughs> on <laughs> I decided okay fine let's see if I can concoct something for uh uh, for a uh, for a wine. Joshua Bashir says that elderflower works extremely well in mead. Okay. I would think so. I love the taste of elderflower. I've got plenty of elderflower, dried oh. elderflowers left. Actually enough to make four more gallons of, 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 of mead or wine. I can give that a shot. But you need more honey. Uh, I can get you more honey. I think that jar you gave me, I think that's two, no. I forgot, I think it was three cups of honey in that, in that, in that container. I've got another two cups of raw honey, the Walmart version. <laughs> and uh, uh, plus what I'm using, plus that little container of orange blossom honey that I'm using to back sweeten the, uh, I've got, I've got some more honey. I bought a lot. 
Okay. Then an elderflower mead it will be. Okay, where are we? We are... Okay, did that. Oh, and Lujitsu is asking Mel if if uh, if they had an elderflower recipe for mead. If there's one out there. If there's one out there or if you've got a link, if you've got a link to one, then when this video is processed by YouTube, if you can just go ahead and throw that in the comment section, that'd be great. Um, or if it's... Uh, Or just the basic ingredients. You can put the uh, the ingredients list in the comment section. I mean, putting it together. I mean, that's not that big of a deal. I can figure that out. No problem. I would be very appreciative. Yeah, I was. Uh, I never actually heard of elder. I haven't heard of a lot of these wines that I've been producing uh, beforehand. But the elderflower wine apparently was Nono's favorite. Uh, she was buying it. Uh, introduced me to it. Uh, it has a. Uh, it, to me, it has a almost a grapefruit-like flavor to it. Um, so it's definitely a citrus uh, flavor wine, uh, even though there's very little citrus that went into it. Um, trying to think of what I, I used. I think I used one orange. Uh, yeah, it's the only uh, citrus that I used in that particular batch. But uh, no, uh, yeah, it's it's not bad. Elderflower uh, and haven't tried an elderberry wine yet, but I'm assuming that uh, the flavor profiles are pretty much similar. Uh, Thank you, Lujitsu. I'll be looking forward to it, Lujitsu. If they uh, will, we'll post it in the in the. Um... Peter Pete, thank you again. Thank you very very much. Uh, best mead is ten percent. Two pounds of honey, one gallon mead. That's kind of light on the honey. Uh, don't forget the banana peel for 10. <laughs> You're making it hard not to. <laughs> I have 500 plus bottles of wine. Means that I, you know, here's the thing about, about making all this wine. Uh, before I started making wines and just buying my stuff at the store, when I could pour it at the store, uh, I was drinking a lot more wine then than I do now. Uh, I might open up a bottle of the stuff that I make, maybe one bottle a week. This week was kind of an exception. Uh, this is like a two bottle a week, uh, which is kind of a problem because I'm making so much of this stuff that I really need to be consuming a lot more of it so I can free up a lot more, uh, a lot more of the bottles that I've got uh, uh, to move on to the next project. Uh, I'm getting close to the point where I might stop for a minute. I need to stop for a minute anyway and take a break um, just so that I can uh, uh, get the bottles or, or free up the bottles to be able to make more batches of wine later on. Uh, I was going to take a break this month, but that's not going to happen because I now have this this new equipment uh, that I'm working with. Uh, I now have uh, uh, Nono is now dropping in. Hopefully she'll do more of these uh, in the future. Uh, only if you guys like me. <laughs> and they'll probably end up saying only if she crack. Oh, see, she's not even drinking the wine she's got. Which is I probably have... why it's off camera. Okay. She, she's taking these little sips. I mean, mm -hmm. now, I mean if you're going to drink wine, I mean, it's, it's, it. mm. ah. and that's the difference between <laughs> those of us with culture and you. <laughs> well, it's not like I'm drinking it from the bottle, <laughs> which in my younger day. <laughs> Thank you, the Candy Floss King. Simple solution. Crack open a bottle of the pineapple wine for your guest. Thank you. <laughs> uh, not going to happen. <laughs> Again, I've only got two bottles left, so I'm kind of rationing up. Maybe next time. Next live stream, I'll crack open that next to the last bottle. But again, saving that last bottle, I have to back sweeten it first. So actually, what will happen is that uh, before the live stream, I'll have to back sweeten it and make it to a level that uh, she's more uh, comfortable with. 
uh, mine are it's it's not a dessert wine, but uh, uh, well, definitely a, it's a it's a semi. No. It's not a dessert wine, but it's not. It's certainly not a semi sweet wine. It's her. Well, how can I say it? I prefer mine just a little bit on the drier side. I put it to you that way. So uh, yeah, before the live stream, I'll definitely prep a bottle. I might recork it. <laughs> just so that we can have a presentation of her using uh, her using her corkscrew. <laughs> I'll bring mine. <laughs> Ooh, Robert Moore says, think about uh, getting strawberry apple wine from the cellar. You haven't get you gave me a strawberry. The strawberry was wonderful. Yeah, the, the strawberry, strawberry was, was definitely a hit. Absolutely uh, wonderful. Most definitely hit. That's why I ended up doing the uh, Oh, this is what I want to talk about. That's why I ended up doing the uh, strawberry meat as a follow-on. Thank you. Yeah, the strawberry meat is a follow-on because uh, the strawberry was that good. I mean, it really uh, was. Next time I actually do the strawberry wine, strawberry wine, I'll probably make another two, three gallons of that because I can, I can, I can make three gallons in my uh, other fermenter. And that's the one that I shared. But I'm definitely wondering how the strawberry meat is going to turn out. Additionally. Uh, this actually came up a few months ago. Uh, whenever I order new uh, airlocks and and, uh, and stoppers, these are number six stoppers that I'm, I generally use for the one gallon carboys and the four liter uh, carboys. Uh, when they're brand new, they don't really have a tendency to stay in place. They have a tendency to just to come out. Uh, so I usually find myself having to, to, to secure them. And this is just a collection of, uh, of uh, twist ties. To hold them down for a couple of weeks. Uh, I can actually take this off now. And after a couple of weeks, I mean, things are fine. Uh, I never have to use these twist ties ever again. But uh, yeah, when they're brand new, they don't want to stay in. I'm just saying, in case you ever run across this on your end, if you're making like five gallon batches, I'm probably not. But if you're doing one gallon carboys, then it, and it, the things it keep popping out, yeah, just, just, just tie them down with twist ties for a couple of weeks. It's not like it's a permanent solution. It's just temporary. Ooh. The Jisoo says try a 5.5 size bung. I might have to step it down to a 5.5. And strawberry rhubarb wine. No. I will make you a strawberry rhubarb pie. <laughs> no, you will like it. You will like it. Take my word for it. It's very good. I mean, it's a, rhubarb, got a, a rhubarb is like, is that like a stalk with, with, in his natural state, like celery? Or it looks it looks like a stalk. It, it, well, it, it is a stalk. It kind of looks like a very colorful uh stock of celery so even though i don't like celery uh, can you like eat it like a celery raw uh, yes you can eat it raw i guess that would be the best way it's to, not or, or maybe not you I, can, I, there I, are people who actually chew it as raw. opposed to a whole pie you <laughs> see okay i'm hoping that i am saying your name correctly because if i am i'm loving it eight nuts i'm hoping that that's right Never turn down a free pie. I like it. I've always pronounced his name as a peanut. So one of us is right. Let us know which one of us is right. Uh, I mean, a free pie, yeah, but you, know, you gotta have certain expectations. I mean, a free apple pie, a free, a, a free uh, 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 banana cream pie, or, or you know, something like something that you know and have you understand. Great, but something brand new. <laughs> have I have I made anything that you don't like? Um, I'm not a big fan of your uh, clam sauce for, for 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 pasta. Just like you all are not a big fan. Supposedly, I'm not a big fan of my uh, uh, what do you call it for my my uh, spaghetti sauce. Uh, you had a name for it. And I remembered it when I was making spaghetti last night. It, uh, 
Oh, I'm gonna say it. I'm gonna remember it. and I'm gonna bring it back up. Mm-hmm. But apparently, it was a it was a none too flat. Un, uh, it was an unflattering uh, reference to my. Uh, I stew my tomatoes. I make it all from scratch. You opened up a can of tomato paste. Uh, the <laughs> term of endearment that uh, was used for uh, my my spaghetti sauce was yuck sauce. Okay, I've never forgotten that. I will never forgive her for that. Okay, <laughs> it is not yuck sauce. It's the way my parents made it. Probably the way their parents made it, and it's probably the way I'm going to teach my children to make it. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, this is a long one. He can. He can. Your son is surprised that he can, that you can cook. He he has his moments. He has very good moments. I actually made a whole video on making pizza for Janelle. Uh, it's on my, my personal pa- uh, YouTube page. Uh, you probably have access to it. Uh, I'll send you the link <laughs> as to how I make pizza. <laughs> He cuts corners. I. Well. You do. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing wrong with a can. Okay. <laughs> That's why I have can openers. Okay. Sometimes it's just quick and easy to open up a can of something as opposed to <laughs> cooking something from scratch. <laughs> it's much better from scratch. <laughs> okay. Oh, the television is on. They're watching. What are you watching? The TV is on? Yeah. No, I forgot something. Um, oversight on my part. <laughs> Janelle, I will get you a pasta sauce recipe. An hour a and real a half, one. An hour and a half of the TV being on. I mean, I made a special effort to turn the clock down just so that that would not be an issue. The dog TV is on. Uh, by the way, I'm Janelle been, I, was asking for the before I get sauce. before I get to Janelle. Uh, that was uh, I, I'm last few days I've been binge watching Game of Thrones. Okay, uh, a few days before that I was binge watching Chernobyl. Uh, basically, I'm on HBO kick uh, for the past couple of weeks. Uh, now that I've got HBO Max, for, came with my. Uh, uh, my upgrade to uh, one gigabit uh, fiber from at and they threw it in there for free, so I've been watching you know, watching that crap. Um, let's see. Um, where am I? Uh, I don't cook with that, Pops. <laughs> yeah, well, I don't know if you're saying, Charles, if you don't cook at all and you're letting your fiancé do, do your cooking for you. That's not going to last. <laughs> I'm here right now. It ain't going to work. Uh, <laughs> Uh, did you show when you were okay, TV? Uh, thank you for reminding me. You could have told me, you know, beginning. Uh, is it Korean? Really? Uh, I subscribe to your channel. Thank you very much. Uh, to make me myself. Well, uh, I'm trying to keep my recipes as simple as possible. I hope uh, hope it's helping out, uh, helping you out. Uh, Janelle, I'm going to need that pasta sauce recipe. Well... <laughs> You mean the clam sauce recipe? <laughs> As your father, it's it's for me to guide you properly so that you don't make errors in judgment. <laughs> As one who loves you dearly, <laughs> I will teach you how to really cook. <laughs> All right, I, I guess, uh, see, Here's the thing with, and I can't imagine, I can't believe I'm actually saying this, with the youngsters, okay? They don't understand. They, they think they know it all, okay? They don't, they, they haven't learned the hard knocks of life. They don't want to listen to the advice of their elders. <laughs> but I'm just saying, if you want their recipe, then I'm sure that we can arrange somehow for it to be, uh, to be, to be sent to you, Janelle. Peter Pete, I grow a lot of my vegetables. I cook everything fresh. And I'm always getting laughed at for taking hours for meals. And they probably enjoy them. Whether they're laughing or not, they enjoy them. And they will miss it if you didn't do it. 
Well, uh, on that vein, uh, while I was living in Detroit and had a house at that point in time, uh, I had a nice, uh, I think that was a 10 foot by, yeah, it was close to 20 foot, a, a, a 10 foot by, by 20 foot plot. And yeah, I was actually growing my own vegetables and whole nine yards uh, back there. And it was great. Uh, uh, I learned how to do canning and that was great. Uh, but uh, now that I'm living in this apartment with a north facing window, I don't have any, I don't get much sun. Uh, those days are pretty much gone, but yeah, it'd be great. I'd, I'd love to be able to do that again. Um, Jacksonville, Florida. Valerie Williams. Um, Good to have you. So glad that you made it live. Oh, I keep dropping the mic. Oh, okay. It keeps, it, it doesn't, it just runs away. I got it now, see? You got, I fixed you got it. it kind of backwards. I uh, fixed it. Well, no, here, let me do this. There we go. All right, let's take this off. Turn that around. Okay. There you go. Thank you. There we go. Now I'm stuck in this spot for the rest of the day. That microphone was the reason why. I got this, and you all contributed uh, through Super Chats uh, to help me purchase this as well. Uh, I can see now that uh, I probably will need a second mic. Uh, this is going to become a regular thing, uh, which I don't mind. Uh, yeah, I don't mind. Uh, Charles to the rescue. <laughs> uh, yeah, but again, that's, uh, that's another issue. Uh, I have to get this camera paid for before I before I take on any any additional. Um, I mean, there's a lot of things I need. There's a lot of things that I want, and there's still two or three things that I need. And the needs will always come first before you get to your wants. And that's just on the channel side. I still got the personal side where <laughs> there's some things that I need, things that I want. Um, but now that all of the resources for this channel are going into well, certainly for this camera, <laughs> for one, uh, I can't. The thing about the camera is that the, the channel doesn't have a, even though it has its own PayPal account, it doesn't have its own credit account. Okay, so things that I buy for the channel, I buy. And the channel eventually reimburses me uh, for that expense. Um, at some point, it would be nice if the channel provided me with some additional revenue for, my, <laughs> for me, but that's not going to happen for a while. Um, but again, I digress. Um, I will check that. Uh, missing. Yeah, because I turned that clock down. That's why. <laughs> I can't believe I left that TV on. But uh, oh, I know why the TV was left on. Uh, our special guest was running a bit late. <laughs> and uh, let's just say we had less than two, two or three minutes before we went live that I had to get her prepped. <laughs> and just didn't have time to turn around <laughs> and turn off the TV. I'm just saying, you know, this is what happened. Uh, <laughs> uh, once it needs them, oh, yep. Mm -hmm. Yep, needs always come first. Uh, okay, you know, surprisingly, our live streams generally tend to go for an hour and a half to an hour and 40 minutes. Uh, I still have, just lost one, uh, still have a pretty decent number of, for this channel at least anyway, of uh, people who are still online. Uh, I have no reason to stop unless you guys have nothing further to add. Uh, so we'll give it uh, a good 10 more minutes at least uh, before we start wrapping this up. And uh, yeah. So far, I'm fairly pleased with the uh, new camera. Uh, yeah, I'm pleased with it so far. I mean, this thing was small though for, for DSLR camera. Uh, I'm used to a camera that, you know, you can hold in your whole hand and your fingers are all covering the grip. But with this one, uh, 
you're gripping it with three fingers. Your bottom finger is on the bottom of the camera. You've got a very large your hand. Your thumb is, is actually overlapping the back of the camera, and it's actually on the dials now, so you have a tendency to turn off the... Uh, turn the camera off or switch modes. The the old camera that I had, the uh, Canon 60D, was a good, was a big man size camera, okay? You can grip it and hold it. It was a bit heavy, but you know what? It didn't matter, <laughs> okay? <laughs> so if I do decide to uh, take up photography again as, a, as, as, a, as my hobby, uh, then yeah, I would probably get an 80 or a 90D. Uh, but this this camera that I've got here, this is strictly uh, for channel work. I don't see myself as walking around uh, doing uh, street photography with this. It's just too small. But anyway, uh, let's see. Up, oh, up, oh, up. Oh. Let me get back to this page. Valerie Williams wants to know how can I know my wine is complete. Valerie, you, you'll need a hydrometer to be sure. Uh, in terms of complete, it, it means that uh, the yeast has consumed all of the sugar uh, that you had initially put in your wine, and you're getting a hydrometer reading of uh, below 0.994 or even better, 0 0.990. Uh, but that's not to say that your wine is still complete unless you're planning on using sulfites to uh, to to make sure that uh, you don't restart fermentation when you add uh, your sugar. Um, if your wine is clear, even that, even if your wine is clear, uh, that's not really a good indicator that your wine is ready, uh, because that uh, that. Uh, this elder floral wine. It's definitely clear. This elderflower wine is only what, four months old. Uh, I know that uh, if I if I back sweeten it now, it's just going to restart. Actually, I probably started back sweetening it. Yep, I did it. Uh, yeah, it was three. No, yeah, three weeks ago, I started back sweetening it. Uh, so I still need to take it out. It, it, it originally went down to 0.994. Uh, I decided that, okay, it might possibly be finished. Uh, so I uh, started to do a little bit of back sweetening. Uh, in another, I guess, a week or so, I'll take another hydrometer reading to see if that uh, new reading has changed. Uh, because you do a hydrometer reading uh, at when you're ready to rack. Uh, you, uh, you add the additional sugar. You uh, then do another hydrometer reading to see what your new reading is. Uh, you record that. And then in a couple of weeks, you take another hydrometer reading to see if that new reading has changed. If it has changed, it has gone down, then fermentation is probably not complete, even though the wine is clear and all of that. Uh, so you then uh, uh, wait for it to uh, uh, give you some additional time to see if it, the hydrometer reading is going to go down even further. Uh, if it seems like it's kind of like holding steady, then you know that it's probably kind of complete at that point. But uh, again, I didn't bring it. Uh, your hydrometer is definitely your friend. Okay, I'll put it to you that way. Uh, Logisa wants to know, um, would you try to push your wine over 20%? Done it, by accident. <laughs> Blackberry, four pounds of sugar for one gallon batch instead of four cups of sugar. Uh, I was surprised that he's decided to just have a, a feast and, and it pressed on it beyond uh, to that 20.4, I think it was 20.4, 20.9, it's 20.4% uh, that it made it to. Uh, but again, uh, it's great that you can produce a wine that's got a lot of alcohol sometimes. <laughs> But when you make enough wine, you begin realizing that it's not the alcohol that, uh, well, it kind of sort of is, uh, but it's more, <laughs> it's more the flavor of the fruit that you're trying to, trying, to, trying to bring through with just a little bit of an alcoholic kick. I mean, if you really wanted alcohol, then you'd go to the store and you buy a bottle of Jack or whatever, you know, call it a day. But uh, again, wine is a bit different. You really aren't drinking for fat most of the time. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, Brad Palmer wants to know if there are any future wine or mead plants that you could share. Uh, 
after I lost my content calendar, no, because um, everything was on there. Uh, I know I am planning on doing that that watermelon wine. Watermelons are beginning to show up at the store. I think they're slowly starting to come into season. I want to do that uh, sooner rather than later. God, I lost all my ideas for wines, upcoming wines. But no, off, off the top of my head, not really. Uh, they're there, but I just haven't haven't focused in on it. I've been I've been so busy with a trying to recover from the loss of that hard drive and and B uh, getting the new new camera equipment uh, uh, and getting getting to learn the new software involved with that, making sure that that works with all of the original software and getting make sure everything works. And this is really a trial just to see how well things are working. I really haven't had time to focus in on on, on on recipes that are coming up next. I mean, the last thing that I did was the uh, was the coffee wine, uh, which seemed to be a great hit in terms of uh, the way my videos go. It seemed a lot of people seemed to like it. Uh, uh, the technique I used was a little bit different, using whole coffee beans instead of ground coffee beans. Uh, um, Probably I might want to give the cold brewing method uh, uh, a test next time. Maybe make a mead out of that. Uh, but no, I really haven't had a lot of time to focus in on, on new ideas for what's coming up uh, in the immediate future. Uh, I really am still thinking about taking a kind of a break uh, as far as that goes. Uh, there was one that... We did that. I'm going to yes. back up a second here because I thought I missed one. You did that one, Charles. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. Did that one. We just did that one. Mm -hmm. Now we're at Peter Pete. We down that far? Mm -hmm. I just did. I did Valerie's Peter mm -hmm. Pete. Ah, Peter Pete. Why not fermentation of veg like pickling? I, I don't know what that is. Pickling vegetables. Oh, no. Uh, and this has come up before. Actually, sometime before when No-No was trying to get me to uh, do the... Uh, kombucha. Kombucha. And having never heard of it before, uh, I thought it was more like a fermented type of uh, food uh, that she was trying to get me to do. And that's not really in line with uh, where I want this channel to go, uh, which is right now uh, wines, meads, and I really do need to start making beers again. Uh, that's pretty much the focus of this channel. Uh, fermented fruit, nope, not in the plants. Mm, excuse me. Um, yeah, you did ask me about that uh, Kyvik yeast. Uh, no, I'm not really planning on using uh, anything other than what I'm currently using, which is the Red Star brand. And the reason for that is that uh, that's what I started with. Uh, so. That's pretty much what I'm sticking with. Just like people who are Lavin users, that's what they started with, and they're happy with it, so that's what they're going to use. Uh, uh, the Red Star for me works. Uh, I've not had any problems with uh, with uh, fermentations, not starting, not completing, uh, uh, especially not by by using by not using uh, yeast energizers or yeast nutrients. Uh, it seems to work, so I've not really any reason to try it. Anything different. You open the strawberry apple wine, it's about... Three month old. I didn't do a strawberry. No, no. He opened. He oh. just opened a strawberry apple wine. Three months. Okay. Good strawberry flavor at the front and apple at the at the end. So it's got a really nice evolution. Yeah, but it doesn't still have that uh, level of harshness. Uh, because of the... Uh, at three months malolactic fermentation it can be complete but if it's if his taste buds say it's good then that's all that matters yeah that's all it really matters uh, strawberry apple apple strawberry I'm beginning to think I've got and this is the problem with the I know it is with the apples I have, a, have like four different batches current batches of apple versions where the apples or uh, sorry where the wines or meads that I have to have to put a stop to any apple related wines that I've done for the, I'm doing for this channel until those have been, 
been uh, properly uh, fermented and bottled. Uh, and I'm beginning to get to that point with strawberries as well. Strawberry papaya, strawberry mead. I'm not sure, but I think I might have another strawberry variant uh, in the back. Yeah, I think I'm kind of saturating this. The, certainly the apples, definitely, and probably the strawberries. So I need to diversify a little bit more before I do something along those lines. Jitsun is uh, suggesting a fan pick ingredient. Somebody will probably say rhubarb. And <laughs> uh, I will uh, create a poll. No, it's got to be a fan pick. I have to mm -hmm. narrow the range down. A poll, I can just simply say this, 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 or uh, this. It's got to be a fan pick. And if it's a fan pick, then it could be anything. So I'm not quite sure how to how to structure that in the uh, channel community page of the channel where people can just pretty much say anything. I could probably uh, create a, a comment. I'll have to look into that. I wouldn't mind uh, doing that. Yeah, I wouldn't mind doing that at all. Um, oh, wow. Mel Pomene. Uh, a cold brew coffee mead. Yeah. Is that it? Yeah. That 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 sounds like it would be interesting. A cold brew coffee mead. I'm looking for that. Up oh, there. Right, right oh, there. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the thing about the cold brew. Hmm. And I kind of realized this after I actually did mine, uh, my coffee wine already. Uh, one, yeah, using whole beans probably cut down on the bitterness uh, that you would normally get with uh, with ground coffee or instant coffee. Um, it wasn't until after I did my video that I started looking at uh, at some of my uh, sister sites uh, like City Steading and uh, looked at their coffee. They were doing a coffee mead. And uh, they were bringing up the topic of uh, cold brewing. And I started looking into that. And apparently that uh, reduces some of the uh, uh, potential bitterness that uh, is inherent in coffees as well. Uh, I wouldn't mind doing that. Uh, uh, again, I can't, whenever I'm doing a recipe, I can't really look at the sister sites to see how they're doing it because it might influence how I do my videos. Uh, so I'm really what I end up doing is I get a lot of my information uh, directly off uh, uh, the internet, uh, as opposed to YouTube, uh, in terms of uh, the winemaking boards or winemaking recipes, uh, to find out what's going on and how to do it, then do it, um, and then look at the other sister sites to see if they've done it. This is like after I've already done mine, uh, to see if they've done it. Uh, if I do look at a sister site prior to making a wine. It's looking at the number of um, uh, views that that particular batch of wine got. Uh, if it's something that just didn't get a whole lot of views to begin with, uh, then it's something that I'll probably end up putting on the back burner. Or if it's just something that I can do differently that might change that, uh, then, you know, okay. But uh, again, uh, a lot of the inspiration that I get is not coming from the uh, sister sites uh, because it's again they have their way of doing uh, a, a given uh, recipe or a given video and uh, the thing about the that makes youtube great is that it's all about the individual personality behind doing a video uh, yeah you can do the same recipe but you can't really or don't really want to duplicate their way of doing it or their personality in terms of how they do it yeah say for instance like with city steading it's more of a, uh, a husband and wife team uh, I've got no no here <laughs> for this particular video, not to try to duplicate what they're doing, but uh, simply because um, uh, it was time I got her over here to to, uh, to help out with this stuff. Uh, but hey, I'm just saying. Uh, Brad Palmer, if you have too many apples, then make cider. Uh, I'm still in the process of of, of uh, fermenting my uh, apple cider. Although I'm beginning to think with that last hydrometer reading that I might have inadvertently made uh, an apple wine with the uh, apple cider juice that I use. Uh, cider generally has a lower AVB than, than wine, but I'll have to see how that goes. Um, 
rhubarb, and carrot. <laughs> okay, Brad. <laughs> <laughs> Um, if you get multiple choice, then we decide on choices. Well, see, that's the thing about doing a poll, though, is that if I set it up, it has to be, yeah, um, I'll have to see how that can be done, uh, in terms of, uh, asking a question in the, uh, community section, how that's done, because I haven't really done that yet. Uh, I'll look into it. Um, Corey? Uh, just to keep it, just keep it up, my friend. You will be have a great channel. I really want to try the lemon wine. I still have that one bottle of lemon wine left, and that's going to be the first wine that's going to make it to the twelve month distance. Uh, so I really, I'm really looking forward to that one as well. Um, yeah, I'm really looking forward to that because it was one of my favorite wines early on. Uh, before I did the um, dark cherry, which is now my current favorite, and then there's always the Welsh's grape juice, which is, I mean, where's not the like about it? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> it's just like apple wine. Welsh's grape juice and apple wine, I mean, those are the ones that you just want to have on hand just to have on hand. I mean, every, all the rest of this stuff is kind of like, okay, that's interesting, but grape juice, apple, you're good. <laughs> <laughs> this is um me never made it a year oh how's your sorrel wine that was the question i you you had a sorrel wine mm -hmm. no Because I don't remember that. I either. never made a sorrel wine. Sorry, Valerie. Wrong channel. <laughs> Stop watching City Steady. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Just checking. Uh, I noticed earlier when I was testing that my mic was cutting out and I just periodically will look at this just to make sure that both mics are working before switching back to YouTube okay what is sorrel I have no idea uh, I don't know Brad if you're getting some bitter notes from your coffee, then you might want to try a light or blonde rose. Oh, I want coffee. I, want, I drink my coffee black. <laughs> okay. <laughs> None of this stuff you get at Starbucks. I like mine just plain black. Maybe every now and then I might spruce it up with a little cream, but basically black. No sugar. None of that. Sorrel is hibiscus. Mm -hmm. Oh, really? Okay. Um, I pulled it up twice. Oh no, I didn't. I didn't bring it. it still, in, uh, it's still going on quite well. Uh, it has not yet cleared yet. It's really getting clear. Uh, it's at the point where I need to go rack it. Uh, I've seen. I've not had any rush to do it. I've not had hibiscus wine before, so I really don't know what what it's like. The hibiscus wine was my, yeah, was my uh, second try. I want to say it's a try. It was my uh, second batch of, of wine made with flowers. Uh, the elderflower wine was was the first. So before I press on, uh, certainly with that dandelion wine that I keep kicking around, or the rose petal wine that I'm still thinking about trying to do, uh, I want to see how those turn out, uh, see if it's something that I like. Uh, but no, I, I really don't know what it tastes like at this point because I haven't even done that initial racking. I need to, but I haven't done the initial racking to do even a tiny little taste just yet. And Candy Floss says, Sorrel is a small edible green plant from the Polygonacea family and includes buckwheat and rhubarb. You know, Wikipedia can be wrong sometimes, <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it can be manipulated. 
I mean, it's not like it's not like. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> One of the first things they taught us in college: Wikipedia is nice; it's easy to use, but you just can't trust it all the time. <laughs> oh, Logistu says you have to bring all twenty carboys to the next to the video next time. You've got more than. I've got more than. 20. Yeah, there are more than twenty in there. I think the table will support the weight, um, but in terms of a live stream, how that's, I, I, what I'll have to end up doing is taking a photo of all, of everything, uh, and then doing the next live stream, simply bring that photo up uh, the way that I do with, uh, say for instance, uh, um, this will work, nope, yeah, this will work, uh, the way I do with this or with that. Uh, where I've got everything all laid out, but I haven't done that yet. Uh, I'll, I'll keep that in mind for the next. I might do it for the mid month, mid week live stream. Yeah, those are pretty casual affairs. Uh, instead of uh, the camera facing this way, it's facing the usual wall. You see me do most of my videos on, which is that blank wall with that little um, uh, crown molding. Crown molding. Uh, which I use because it's just a whole lot simpler <laughs> overall to shoot back than, than it is to set up this uh, this whole thing here. And this is not everything. Uh, usually I'll have uh, uh, heavy clothes hanging on, on, on clothes, uh, clothes hangers hanging from the uh, uh, the lights uh, to help deaden some of the sound. But since uh, the new microphone covers a lot of the uh, background noise with noise suppression, uh, unlike the old microphone, uh, I don't have as much. I've got a um, blanket here, and I've got a towel over here. But that's basically it for this for this shot, uh, this live stream, in terms of noise suppression. Uh, let me get back to here. Are we caught up here? No. Uh, no. Uh, Valerie, no. <laughs> yeah. Send kilos of rhubarb. I looked into getting a post office box for uh, this channel. Uh, I'm not ready to, uh, to 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 go that monthly expense for a post office box, even though I can see now that I, I really do need one. Uh, just today, uh, I subscribed to, uh, who am I using? Uh, I'm using, um, you know, Fresh Books. Uh, to do for my accounting. Uh, I still have my spreadsheets uh, that I do most of my initial accounting on uh, so I can keep track of my stuff on a day-to-day -day basis. It's easier to use the, the Excel spreadsheet, link spreadsheets. Uh, the accounting program, is, I'm still in the process of actually putting in my the rest of my receipts uh, for my expenses. Uh, but yeah, the, the program, the channel has gotten to the point where I need a, a, a real accounting program and fresh books uh, uh, is the one that I've decided to use. It's a hell of a lot simpler than the one that I had been using, uh, which was more of a double entry style bookkeeping uh, program, uh, which 13 years ago would have been okay uh, because I knew uh, I knew how to do double entry bookkeeping uh, from the college courses that I was taking. But 13 years later, no, I don't. <laughs> and I didn't really relish the thought of having to relearn any of that stuff. So it was kind of a chore to do with double entry. This one is a whole lot simpler. It's like QuickBooks uh, in its setup, and it's it's a whole lot easier. It's, I, I wish it was a downloadable version instead of an online thing, but at least being online, I don't have to worry about a hard drive dying on me. And, and even the solid state drives can fail after a period of time. So yeah, it's, it's, it's in the cloud, so. Um, I'm populating that, and that will be my accounting program of choice. The thing about, and I'll catch up in some of these comments, the thing about a, a YouTube channel is that uh, once the channel becomes monetized, actually really before that, uh, it becomes a business. It's At this point, it's a sole proprietorship for me. I might make that a, a limited a limited liability partnership later on. Uh, but you're, make, you're getting revenue, and you have expenses, and you need to track all of that. Uh, people, who, all of those of you who made donations, uh, all of that information over in the uh, PayPal account still has to be tracked and, and, and accounted for. Uh, 
I make it plain to you uh, what it is that I need and where the money goes. Uh, you seem to get it uh, so that you know that I'm not spending the money on on, on alcohol or <laughs> anything else. That, uh, uh, <laughs> well, you are spending it on alcohol, technically. Mm, technically, yes. But again, it, it becomes a business and you have to run it as, as such. Uh, sole proprietor, if you've never run a business before, a sole proprietorship, even on a small level, you realize that uh, if you have run it, you know it's a hell of a lot of work uh, running a business at any level. Uh, so, yeah, the, the channel has gotten serious in that regard, which is one of the reasons why I asked for uh, help with uh, purchasing this uh, camera equipment and everything else that I'm going to need uh, Yeah, to make things work. But I digress. Getting back to uh, some of our questions here. I think that they're having a conversation about hibiscus. Oh, and yeah. <laughs> Hmm. Why are you guys doing that? Let me grab something real quick because I don't have it here. So he leaves me here <laughs> to entertain you again. All right. Current state of the hibiscus wine, which definitely needs to be wrapped. Um. Uh, yeah, most definitely. What am I? Glad I pull this up. I mean, it's <laughs> it's getting clear. It is clear, except for that huge layer of sediment at the bottom. No, Candy Floss King. He is not getting that pineapple wine for me. Nope. I think you should continue to put nope. the pressure on him <laughs> to get that for me. Mm. How old is this? I made this win. January, February, March, March, April, May. So uh, about two months ago. In two months, a perfect layer of sediment. It's actually clear, quite honestly. But to answer that earlier question about the headspace, I didn't have any spare uh, hibiscus. Uh, least to replace this with so that when I do my next racking more than likely yeah I'll probably use water uh, mm -hmm. next week pineapple wine for no no I can't see that for whatever reason <laughs> my reading specs on because I swear I don't see that mm -hmm. all right uh, No. <laughs> uh, where do you make your labels? Um, I use a, I'm using uh, Canva, C-A-N-V-A, uh, which is an online application. It's free. There's a paid version of it. More than likely, I'll probably end up uh, subscribing to the paid version because I use this every time I do a, uh, a video or make a wine label. Uh, uh, the templates are there. Uh, I'm using again the free version, so all of uh, they have a, a number of different wine uh, label templates, and you simply I just simply modify. Usually, I think I've got about one for whites and one for reds, and I'll go in and I'll just change the. Uh, no, actually, that's for the uh, intro video introductions um, for the wine labels themselves. Yeah, um, once you've got the basic design, uh, you pick a basic design for the border. Uh, then you just, just like any other text editor, you just fill in what you want and then you can move in your uh, your, your video, uh, your images for what it is you want. So for instance, it's kind of hard to see here, but uh, downloaded uh, free uh, PNG files for the, uh, uh, for the uh, grapefruit. And you just basically put it together like you would in using any other like Word document for the most part. And you simply download it, uh, uh, that uh, file, you then uh, take that image because it downloads as an image file. You take that image file and uh, you then bring that over into. I'm using uh, Word, and then uh, with Word, I'll put uh, three rows, two two columns, and uh, these are printed up on uh, full sheet labels. Uh, and then I simply use a, a paper cutter and I simply cut them to size, and that's that. Um, I. 
Yeah, I, I actually did a video of part of this, which was the uh, um, video I did on cork, no, uh, corking, capping, and bottling video, which was actually my favorite video, uh, where I kind of described the process of labeling as well in that particular video. Uh, let's see, what else? Do you have any plans on making other fermented drinks? other than wine and meat, for example, a tapachi? The heck is that? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know either. Uh, I'm not quite sure what that is. However, if I can do this without messing anything up. Uh, we're using pineapple peels. Is that it? Really? A pineapple beer. Oh, okay. I don't see why not. It's a light and sweet pineapple beer. Did I pronounce it correctly? Top box, yeah, possibly. Okay, it's a pineapple beer. Um, I would, I will add that to my uh, newly created content calendar. Yes, Carvani. Uh, Canva is amazing uh, for, for all oh. you get for in the free version of it. Uh, I mean, if there's something, it, it, like I said before, it's something that I use on a regular basis. So yeah, uh, it's something that I will end up subscribing to, which will open up even more features that uh, Canva has to offer. I think it's a great uh, application. Thank you, Mel, for the confirmation. <laughs> I more or less pronounced it correctly. And yes, you have to share it with me. <laughs> it says it right there. I'm sorry, share what? I'm not quite, what, is, what, am, what am I sharing? <laughs> uh, the uh, Tipachi? Sure, I don't see why not. Okay. I'm surprised this live stream is going on. Yes. Way longer than usual. This uh, has actually been a lot of fun. Yeah, the live stream, you guys don't see the work behind it all, but the live streams themselves are actually a lot of fun, which is why I have no, I have no problems with doing these, and which is why I started doing the uh, mid-month, mid-week live stream. Uh, uh, well, two reasons why I did the mid-month, mid-week live stream. One, it means that I, I'm not actually making anything, uh, which means I'm slowing down the production rate, which gives me more time to properly age and bottle all of my stuff. Um, so that was one of the reasons why I did the mid-month, mid-week live stream. Um, but again, yeah, they are a lot of fun. Um, uh, the mid-month, mid-week live streams are actually easier to set up uh, than the uh, first of the month live streams because I don't have to disconnect my computer and bring it over here and, and reconnect everything all up. I can just simply leave it on my, my coffee table, which has got uh, uh, rollers on it or, or decorative wheels. And I can simply roll everything up to the table and just simply put the monitor in front of me or <laughs> and call, plug it in and call it a day. Uh, yeah, you get the blank wall, but uh, it's, it's a whole lot easier to set up. Um, but again, let's see, where am I? Okay, it's a uh, basically it's a <laughs> small wine that's made by fermenting pilanchilo. Highly unrefined sugar that comes from brown sugar. Well, we do have uh, raw brown sugar available to, to us here, which I don't mind using. Actually, I need to get some more because I'm running out. Uh, I love the face Charles makes, Mo. <laughs> it's all about being real. <laughs> uh, the pineapple skins are added to give the yeast, okay, using it kind of like a, a yeast nutrient. Because okay. ordinarily, I wouldn't have thought about using pineapple skins at all. Uh, even my dad warned me for a try that the yeast on the pineapple skin upset your stomach. Well, that will probably be dealt with if it's a question of the wild yeast on the pineapple skins. Since I'm not using uh, Camden tablets, more than likely everything will probably follow the standard procedure that I use and everything will get dumped into boiling water. 
bring water up to a boil, put everything in, turn off the stove, let everything come down to room temperature, which is enough to kill the wild yeast. Uh, so yeah, that should be an issue there. Uh, peanuts? Um, no, Melpony. Uh, oh, we just did that. One. Peanuts. Uh, the banner between you and no, no, it's great. <laughs> uh, hope you two of you do it again. Only if he invites me. Yeah, if she shows up more than three minutes before showtime, uh, next time, maybe, but uh, <laughs> this time around, I don't know. <laughs> I don't think about that one. Um, Next week, uh, can you make a sangria wine? Uh, no. Sangria is a mixture of wines. I uh, sangria is, um, oh gosh. Yeah, it's a, it's a wine mixture. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, well, fruit and wine. Yeah, fruit and wine. Well, if I make a red wine, well, that's the same thing. I mean, if I'm making a, it depends on, I guess, the red wine that, that they're referring to. If it's just a, a red wine, you know, and then adding fruit to it, I guess technically you can call it sangria, but I don't know. Don't know about that one. You may paint up a way strong, but it's too strong for me. Um, if I come early, you have to open the pineapple wine. <laughs> yes. The pineapple wine was like, okay. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, I'll do it, but it was just okay. Um, A cactus wine. That means going across the street to Home Depot, I mean, I mean, sorry, to Lowe's, buying a cactus plant, which ain't cheap, and then make, trying to make wine out of it. Nope. Yeah, see it happen. It's a nice. It's a nice idea, though. You can actually get cactus at the grocery store. I think I've seen something kind of similar to it. It didn't have the the, the thorns or, and all of that. Mm -hmm. I'll look into it. Um, I was right. Eight nuts. I like it. You've been live streaming with me for how long? <laughs> and you just now decided to correct me in, in the pronunciation of your screen name? Okay. Well, see, I pay attention. I'm just saying. Give the lady what she wants. <laughs> <laughs> I've come to learn that it doesn't really matter how much you give them, they're never satisfied, okay? It's as simple as that. Any satisfaction is always short term because <laughs> they're always gonna want something else. But, you know, pineapple wine, all right, next bus, We'll stream. discuss that later. Prickly pear is cracked, <laughs> yeah. Yes. It's a version of it. Yes. And I have had a prickly, it was it a prickly pear martini, which was very good. It was very good. So a prickly pear wine would probably be equally as good. I think you should try it. I can find it and, and bring it. <laughs> See, I am offering you all of this assistance. <laughs> And you're finding a way to turn it down. I'm not saying anything. I'm just referring, looking at Corey's response. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> Corey, we don't need your help. <laughs> oh, on this five gallon thing, by the way, uh, legit so, um, I really don't have space for it. Um, uh, the, the 20 plus gallons that I've got now, I really kind of don't have the space for, for those as well. Um, I've got no other place to store this stuff. Uh, 
originally all this stuff was just was just placed in the bedroom uh and then i decided to move everything into uh it's kind of like a uh, elongated uh, utility closet before i got my washing machine uh and now that i got my washing machine uh which takes up about a third of that space uh i've now I, I don't have the space for anything larger than one gallon batches at all and I need to start cycling through these one gallon batches so I can keep make sure I've got enough space just for those. Five gallons? Can't do it. No place for it. Okay. They want me in a brewing video. I'm a hit. I'm a fan favorite. <laughs> if it was just a question of having just a pretty face sitting next to me, you know, I could get a little placard, like those little cardboard cutouts. I mean, I could take a picture of her and just simply have that printed up life size and just simply put it in a chair. You know how they have those debates where one of the candidates decides they don't want to show up, so they decide to put the candidate's uh, likeness in a, in a placard. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, the um Brickly pear? Hokonoso. Oh. Are there are there I haven't seen Mexican stores here. I've seen Asian, I've seen uh Portuguese. There's a, a couple of, of Portuguese stores here. Uh, I think there are quite a few here because uh this city is a sanctuary city. Uh uh maybe not in this particular area, uh which is Kind of like bordering one of the upscale areas uh, of the city, at least at least at least on my side of uh, this, of, the, of the road. I'm like a, a surrounding suburb of one of the upscale areas. Uh, somebody who lives on the other side of the road. <laughs> my, my <laughs> uh, we can find it. Custom fat hair for the wall. <laughs> if you get a custom fat head of me to replace me, I am going to be very put out. But the greenhouse, the greenhouse is actually a good idea. You can get a, a, a little greenhouse and uh, grow that thing. You know, it's nice to suggest these things, but again, that 40 bucks is 40 bucks uh, for this channel. Not going to happen anytime soon. Uh, again, uh, <laughs> not going to happen anytime soon. I, 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 I firmly believe in paying off these expenses first. And then if there's anything uh, after that, then OK, maybe I can move in another direction, but not happening anytime soon. Uh, a, a no, no bobblehead. <laughs> it doesn't have to be a big one, just a just a little one, you know. You just flick it every now and then to bobble the head. That's, that's all it really need. <laughs> Lujitsu, I love you. You are perfect. All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna cut this at eight thirty because okay. this is going on way too long. It's fine, but it's way too long. I like that, Mel. What if I make a pineapple wine in a video and in the end I can decide whether or not to share it with you? I'm just going through my head what I did to make that pineapple wine on the onset. I mean, overall, it really wasn't that different from the rest of the wines, but still. Um. I can put on a grass skirt. Um. That was the uh, the <laughs> elderflower mead that you want to do. Uh, let me look at the recipes mm -hmm. that I can find for that, and then we'll have you uh, stop by for putting that together. I would love to. Yeah. Thank you guys. You guys have made this so much fun. I was a little a little um, nervous about doing this, but you guys have made it fun. Thank you so much. Uh, just a heads up in case anybody didn't hear it uh, uh, a bit early. No. 
few moments ago. Uh, we're going to wrap this up at... Um, <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna wrap this up in six minutes <laughs> we're just laughing at what you just said Corey you know just like, no no it's trying to change the channel from the wine to the to the club with the green <laughs> Hey, if that's what it takes to get 10,000 members okay fine I have no problems with that whatsoever <laughs> Uh, okay. He has to figure out how to wrap it up. What? What? Oh, that's not hard. That's the wheels <laughs> turning. You can see the smoke. Uh, back when these used to be one hour live streams, trying to wrap it up in one hour was kind of hard. Uh, I never thought I would do a two and a half hour live stream. I mean, that's. <laughs> Wait. Charles in the grass skirt. He's got nice legs. A grass skirt would look good on him. Ah, question. If I stop fermentation in four weeks, will it make my wine sweet? Uh. Again, Valerie, without knowing what your hydrometer reading is saying, uh, I mean, if it's still in the process of fermenting and you're looking at a, if you did have a uh, hydrometer and it's saying something like 1. Uh, 1.020 or 1.030 or something like that, then yeah, it's going to be a, it's a sweeter wine. Uh, if you, the thing about getting wine to end up with a certain sweetness is that you need to know how much sugar to put in initially. Uh, normally uh, three or four cups to give you a hydrometer reading of 1.080. You know it's going to go dry uh, but you can again you can defeat that by adding additional sugar from the onset. You know, you'll end up with a higher more than likely a, a higher uh, AVB level at the end but uh, and it also depends on the uh, strain of wine yeast that you're using. If you're using a wine yeast that's supposed to uh, have an alcohol tolerance of about 14%, like the uh, Red Star Coupe de Blanc, uh, or something like that, uh, where it's only going to go up to a certain level and whatever sugar is left is your sweetness level. I mean, that's probably an easier way of doing it. But if you don't have like a, a, a variety of yeast to choose from, uh, and you've got just a, a brand of yeast and it's, 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 it's alcohol tolerance is say 15 or 16 percent, uh, then you're kind of stuck with trying to overwhelm the yeast with a lot of extra sugar from the onset. Uh, I mean, there are ways of doing it. Um, um, but again, not knowing what yeast you're using, uh, not knowing your original sugar, uh, I don't really know what else to say other than that at this time. <clears throat> If you wear a grass skirt, Lujitsu will join the YouTube channel. No, we're not <laughs> gonna, uh, becoming a subscriber is, is <laughs> or something like that. Just this doesn't cut it. I mean, you, you've got to a you've got to become a member. Uh, I want to see a donation, a nice, sizable donation on the PayPal uh, donation account. Uh, I, I I have to show some some serious intent. You've got to you've got to have a commitment. The possibility of you becoming a subscriber that doesn't quite cut it. I mean, no, you got to you got to put the money up front. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Hmm. Only with the pineapple wine. You know, we're going to we're going to get that pineapple wine. I'm going to get it. Oh. Two minutes. Ooh, and a coconut bra. <laughs> I'm gonna stop now. <laughs> I still have that coconut in the freezer that I used as a prop. Actually, it wasn't even a prop because I, I took the coconut water that was in it and added it to the coconut wine, but I, I threw everything. The coconut, which was still a whole shell, a hole in it, in the freezer. You know, we, can, we can make use of those. I don't like go out and buy a new coconut. Um, okay, it was a fun stream tonight. It was.
Thank it you. took a little. It took a minute for it to get started, but like most of these live streams, uh, once you all start showing up, and it, it's no longer become a question of you asking questions. It's a question of you all just just making comments about what's going on uh, on this side of the screen. And of course, that's always appreciative. Uh, it lets me know that hey, these live streams are worthwhile, and you guys are having fun, which is really the important part. If I can have fun over here, uh, especially with Nono uh, assisting me this time around, uh, which adds to the fun instead of me just <laughs> being a one-man band, <laughs> trying to make all of this work, uh, uh, so much the better. Um, let's see. Red Star, uh, Valerie, Red Star, uh, the Candy Floss King, amazing first stream. Oh, I forgot. That's right. This was your first dream. Glad to tune in. Can't wait. Uh, can't wait. Can't wait to catch the, the next, next one. one. Okay. Uh, the mid month, midweek live streams again are basically an experiment, uh, but we'll see how that goes. Uh, really enjoy tonight. Well, thank you, Brad, for coming in, being one of the first ones, sticking through the entire two and a half hours. I know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and the stream is. How often do you do the stream? Once it, a month? It, it was once a month, but now it's starting to become twice a month. Kind of, sort of. Well, it's still being, well, we'll see how that twice a month goes, but it's still, yeah, twice a month. Um, Candy Floss King, your first live stream as well. Well, didn't mean for it to go on as long as it did, but hey, as long as everybody's having fun, I'm glad you enjoyed being here. Yes. We have enjoyed it, or I've enjoyed it. The stream it. is once a week. I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> uh, even back when I was making stuff during the live stream, the first few live streams with the with the uh, grapefruit wine, with Welsh's grape juice wine, with the apple wine, the pear wine, uh, it it kind of solved the problem of being able to do a live stream and 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 filling in a slot for doing a. Uh, doing a wine as well, but now that I've gone strictly to just doing a live stream, uh, it takes away that time for doing a wine. Uh, doing it once a week, not going to happen. Uh, uh, again, you guys see the fun part of this. <laughs> I see the work part of this <laughs> behind the screens, <laughs> and there's a lot of work. Um, Ten minutes late. Well, you made it. That's the important thing. And you stayed until the end. Which thank I don't understand, you. but hey. <laughs> Say thank you. Thank you. Because we're, we're going to wrap this up real quick. Uh, Johnny, uh, my first two. Is your racking cane? Yes, it is. It is the mini racking cane because, uh, again, these are one gallon, four li one gallon slash four liter containers. I, I really didn't want to have like a... a I really didn't want to have a, a big racking cane sticking out the top of my uh, uh, my, my, my carboy. And now that I've got a bottling wine, uh, I found out that, and I was going to do a video on the bottling wine. There's kind of like an issue with using the bottling wine with a racking cane, which you have to do. And it pretty much involves around the, the uh, getting it first started for that first bottle of wine. Uh, because you've got your racking cane sticking out, you've got your little uh, suction tube that you have to you know, slide in and out to get the suction going. But the uh, the bottling wand has got that little valve at the end of it that's closed, which means that nothing is going through. So you can't get you can't get suction here and watching it go down through the bottling uh, bottling wand because it's not going to go through. It's just everything stops here. So you got to figure out how you can do a two handed operation, which has now become a three handed operation because you got to hold that bottling wand down so you can get suction going. So you're trying to Flick up the, the little 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 uh, turn uh, bend in the in the in the, in the bottling wand to get the suction going. That's not quite working. So you're trying to take your bottle. You're trying to get it up close, where you kind of like grab onto the to the to the to the, to the, to the suction uh, tube and try and get it working that way. But that's that's a pain in the in the rear end as well. I want to do a video about that eventually. But how how to get around that? I haven't quite figured out how to get around it yet. But use your feet. Once you got that first one going. Everything's fine after that. I mean, there's no problem. But again, <laughs> that's not the issue. Lou says to use your feet. Mm. Thank you, everyone. You guys have been so welcoming. Thank you so much. I have had a 
bunch of fun, and I hope that he invites me to do this again. Okay, and with that, folks, I'm glad you all stopped in. Uh, for those of you who donated via the Super Chats, I appreciate it very well. Again, uh, memberships would also be appreciative uh, to help this channel, help support this channel, as are the uh, donations to the uh, PayPal account. Uh, just because I got the camera, like I said before, that don't mean it's paid for. Okay, I'm paying for it. Uh, and with that, uh, one last thing, uh, Richard uh, uh, Rondo, uh, my wife helps uh, for really kind. We got two good. Well, I'm glad you appreciate it, and, and I'm glad you stopped by and enjoyed uh, the live stream. Once again, next live stream in two weeks. Uh, I'm not quite sure the time, probably 3 o'clock in the afternoon, Eastern Standard Time, uh, just to see how that works. Uh, while I'm trying to find a good time to accommodate those who can't make the uh, uh, first of the month live streams. Uh, no, no, probably we'll be back uh, at some point in time in the future <laughs> whether it's a distant future or not that's to be determined but hey <laughs> we'll see and with that folks hey y'all have a good night and here